What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the PlayStation Collectors Podcast. This is Season 3, Episode number 26. And tonight, we welcome Gamer Amy to the show. What's up, Brandon? Howdy, howdy. Welcome, welcome. What? Thank you hey. guys for having me. I do appreciate it. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming on. Love your collection. It's awesome to thank finally you, have thank you here. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest. I'm excited about this episode. Um, I, I watched your game room tour like right before this, your fresh 2024 one, a nice, nice. And new, not even like an old one from two years ago or three. This is like a <laughs> recent one. And oh my goodness, you have quite the collection. It is Im- very impressive. I'm just going to throw that out there to start. Amazing. I appreciate it. <laughs> I've been following you on Instagram for a long time. So I'm familiar with a lot of your collection. It's awesome. Nice. <laughs> so all the, you know, just spiral out of control. You've seen it all. <laughs> Oh, I loved it. You know what? It's it's deep. You have like a Neo Geo pocket collection. Oh my goodness. You have you have quite a collection. <laughs> it is amazing. So I loved it. It's fun. It was uh fun to check it out. Um so anyone, if you guys uh haven't seen her channel, you should definitely go subscribe and check it out and and, and watch some of the videos. They're they're fantastic. Um <laughs> couldn't believe how many kiosks you have. Wow. Yeah. Do, do you have I'm one for like every idea. system? No, I have like 20 some different ones, but I'm trying to get as many as possible, <laughs> like financially possible. So I try to yeah. find amazing deals. I don't pay like full retail for any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I couldn't afford my collection if I had to pay full value for everything. <laughs> so mm-hmm. definitely get lucky. Awesome. I got a buddy who's got 20 chaos as well, and he bought them all in one lot. And it was wow. Like- mad deal at the time and required like a crazy logistical shipping network would happen but he owns um he owns three different um gaming arcades nice. uh, with pinball machines and kiosks and different retro machines so he just constantly like swaps them out and and then he's got an airbnb that's hosted as like a gaming house and you go in That's there and awesome. it's full of pinball machines and arcades and kiosks as well. So it's always just like rotating. And yeah, it's really cool that he's not just has this collection. He has it for the public to play yeah. and collectors and gamers will play and people that look after the stuff. That's really cool. That's yeah, super you know, crazy. 20 at one time. Yeah. Wow. And I, I actually had a kiosk, a PS3 kiosk. I just sold it to him. <clears throat> and then like a month later he's like bro i'm buying the craziest thing you sent me a photo it was 20 I'm like, oh my God. like ranging from n64 dreamcast all the way to all the modern stuff you can imagine all the nice. playstation stuff all the xbox ones we we you not the switch but yeah it's so crazy very nice yeah they're getting harder and harder to find and people are like starting to ask crazy money for this stuff <laughs> yep that's so. what i was just gonna say yeah, I'm um, I'm glad I started when I did because well, I mean, I, I'm still finding them cheap. You could still find them, but you just you got to be quick. Hmm. And a lot well, of people require a little work. Game rooms like everyone, there's more collectors out there today and mm-hmm. they see game room tours on YouTube like yours and <laughs> they be like, "I want one of them." And you know, the more people out there going for this stuff drives the price up and that's mm-hmm. all 
I swear <laughs> that um, setting up a game room now is like as important as uh, the collection of itself. Like I see that's a thing on Twitter quite a bit as people rank people set up now. They like take pictures and put them up against each other. Like who's got the better setup? Who's got this and blah, blah, blah. And I've seen people say straight up like guys got better games, but I don't like the way he's got it displayed. The other guy's mm -hmm. got a better display. And I'm like, that's so funny. People are so then nitpicking like not even the collection anymore. It's like, I don't like your the way your labels are facing, sir. I don't like the <laughs> you don't have protectors on these things. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! I I done a video on mine, and I I remember receiving a comment because I've got four monitors, and they're all like different brands and sizes, and all the monitors aren't the same. You know, you need to fix that. <laughs> it's like you know, I I got this because I found that one for ten bucks one day, and my buddy gave me this one once, and that one was on the special, and. <laughs> That's how you get four. You don't just go and buy four brand new ones exactly the same. Yeah, that'd be nice. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's crazy that people, um, you know, critique all that stuff. And it's like, what does your setup look like? And you're coming at me because <laughs> my stuff. I already warned you. It's not in alphabetical order on this one shelf. I just put it up before I filmed, and then people still comment. That one shelf that you already warned us is not alphabetical. Just letting you know, it's not alphabetical. <laughs> like, like I know. I told you that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the worst. When you're like, and it's like at the start of the video, you'll mention it. And then they still bring it up. It's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I think my the way my games are organized would drive any other normal person insane. It makes mm -hmm. no sense, but it makes perfect sense to me. Like, it's like, I have this genre here and I have this genre here. And it's like, I have my Castlevania type games over here and my racers over here. And it's like, but it's no logical sense. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't know. Um, but it works but for you. It does to an extent, but I'll be honest. Sometimes it's like, you know, people are like, I want to play this game. And I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> it's going to be. I think I own that one, maybe. That's the worst, is when you're not sure if you own stuff. Do you have, like, your whole thing catalog? Do you track everything you own? I, I don't. Um, I'm trying to get it all digital. I have it all, like, handwritten out, and um, I have a lot of printed lists. <laughs> it's terrible. I have all, like, the serial numbers documented and all that crazy stuff, but I'm trying mm -hmm. to get it um, digitized. Mm -hmm. And people make fun of me because at game conventions, I'll walk around with like a big thick packet of like, because I'm going for the full Super Nintendo set and a few other sets. Mm -hmm. And I highlight as I go. And people are like, you could just put that in your phone. And I'm like, I know, but it doesn't feel the same. Like, it's more fun pulling out the paper, going through, oh, here's the B. Oh, I'm missing this game. To me, that just feels fun. It's like a little treasure hunt. Like I'm marking it mm -hmm. off on like the map or something. And everyone's like, you could just look in your phone. And I'm like, I get that. But if the internet's slow, because mm -hmm. we're at a convention and everyone's on their phone or my phone dies or I'm filming, it doesn't make sense. I, I've done that before with my PS3 set. The first time I went for a full set, I like wrote the last 150 games in a book and was just crossing them off as I went. <laughs> Today, I've got all my games on like a Google sheets document that way um i enter them up when i get home on the computer and then when i do go out i've got a list on my phone yeah i don't think anything's wrong with that <laughs> there's so many it's good things out there today like you can you can have a list printed and you can import it into these apps and, mm -hmm. and they automatically add them and different things like that so there are some really cool things but it's one of those things that once you start a system hard to change because you get stuck in your ways you know you got a big collection it's all written down on paper it would take you it would literally take months to like transfer it all into a word document or something oh definitely it'll probably take me forever just to um recatalog in a different way <laughs> yeah it, it generally took me six months to like transfer from having it all on paper to putting it on the computer and i just do like 10 games a day and eventually i got it all done yeah, I'm thinking I'll get one of those apps that scan your games and puts it all on your phone or do because I, I need to because it's gotten to the point now where I'm like, 
did I buy that game? I can't. I, I remember I wanted it and I remember mm-hmm. I put it in my cart 17 times. Did I ever actually buy it though? I don't remember. Or like, I'll be like, did I buy part one or part two? Did yep. I need part three or part four? I, it's, it's, it's all, it gets foggy. And, you know, of course, I have absolutely bought in the same game multiple times. And it's so same. annoying. It's so frustrating when I'm like, I did it again. <laughs> And it's not even like a good game. Like it's it's Bubsy on the Super Nintendo. And I bought that like three times. And I bought the same fishing game on the Super Nintendo like three times. And Mm -hmm. it's like I have a paper list. I have the highlights. I don't know why I bought it three times. But then I just had to give it away. Like I just Mm -hmm. did a little giveaway just to because no one's gonna want that game. Like those games. Unless they got for a full set and don't have it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like it just I won't buy it another time, though. I promise. I won't do it one more time. <laughs> Top cover. I feel like I've only done that once or twice. I bought a lot of doubles to, like, split. But in terms of, like, actually buying something for the collection, it's very rarely that I do that. i got a pretty good memory, though. So I probably... Yeah, I thought I did. And then when you buy Bubsy three times, you don't have a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for me, what it is is I'll see something that's like on a crazy sale, and I'll just like compulsively be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, pick that up, yeah, yeah, yeah." And then I get it, I'm like, "Oh, I already had that, dang it!" And then I look yep. up, and I'm, and I paid double when I bought it, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it, Randy. I wanted to ask. Um, I know we've been talking about your collection, but I wanted to get you to um, tell us about your collection and all the systems you collect for, and how long you've been collecting for. So I've been collecting since like. I want to say like 2015 ish. Um, I started with my Jungle Green Nintendo 64 that I had from a, like a kid, <clears throat> and um, I had a few games for it, but I didn't have anything else. I had sold my PS2, I had sold my Xbox, I had sold my GameCube. Like over the years, I sold that stuff for college. Like I, I sold it to get extra income. And mm-hmm. I just got rid of all that. The only thing that I had was my N64. So one day in like 2015-ish, I went into this flea market and I saw tons of retro games. I saw Nintendo Entertainment System and I grew up playing that over at my cousin's house. And I saw tons of N64 and I went home and I dug out my N64. And I started buying more and more and more. Like I wanted a Nintendo. I wanted a Super Nintendo. I wanted a Game Gear. I wanted a Genesis. I wanted a, you know, Sega Saturn. So I just started buying like every console and I started buying some of like the hits, like the games that I remember playing, whether it was at my house, my friend's house. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, it just went out of control. I, in those like couple years, I started posting like pictures on Instagram of like, I started seeing other people doing it of like their pickups and stuff. And then I ended up buying, I wanted to go for a worldwide set of N64s. So I bought um, all the different variants. I even have like Korean releases, Australian, I have Japanese. So I have like all these like rare ones that you can. Talking about the consoles guys, by the way, not games. She has an insane (laughs) N64 collection. (laughs) It's like crazy. Yes, I I I was watching I your video and I, like, every time I was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, wow, wow, <laughs> oh my goodness. Cause it's not even like a look, you like a couple. It's like you have, you're like, no, I have like all of them. And like, I, you had N64 I've never even seen before. So, yeah. <laughs> so I just kind of like honed in on that because that's like something that I grew up with. And then I wanted to buy the, the Pikachu one. So I bought a Pikachu one and I went to this guy's house to buy it. And he had like kiosks and arcade machines and displays. And I was like, wow, I'd love to have an N64 sign like that. And he's like, I might sell it one day. And then he reached out and he was selling it. So I bought it from him. And then I bought an NES Sharp TV that I that he had. And I didn't know about that. And then no, I had it. bought. Um, Does it have the remote? Did you get the remote too? No, it did okay, not. Okay. That's like more than the TV. I, think, I know. It? One day. <laughs> I'll find it in like a 50 cent bin or something. I'll find it one day. Yeah, like a yeah. hundred remotes for a dollar and it'll be in there. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> they're they're the real, those there. deals. Yeah, one day. <laughs> I go to the dump every week and look at the TVs every week and still, still look for good CRTs or, you know, you never, you never know. know. One day I'll be like, oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh man, it'll happen. <laughs> yeah, so I just I went crazy and then I started finding like kiosks and I wanted more. Like the second I got one thing, I just wanted more. And I started doing research and I would find crazy things and like I didn't know these things existed. And then it was, you know, some prototypes for a little while. And then it was like these rare obscure items and cardboard displays and standees and it just really went out of control and next thing you know i bought a house and i thought the house that i was going to buy was going to be big enough for all of it well then i started collecting toys so now i'm in like my toy room so now like the computer's in the closet because i needed all the wall space for shelves <laughs> and I took over part of the laundry room and I have the whole basement and I have every closet and, you know, the whole basement completely jam packed. And it's just, I just kept, you know, buying more and more and more, but I love the history. I love the rarity. I love, you know, finding these deals. And then when people come over, they, they see this stuff and they're like my childhood and everyone just absolutely loves seeing the entire game room lit up. They love playing these games and it just like keeps, you know, like feeding this. And now I want to take over the garage next. And I have some arcade machines out there, but I definitely want, you know, more. And I have that big Mario Kart. Um, I ended up buying, it's not officially licensed by Nintendo. And this company was sued by Nintendo and they were supposed to destroy all of these coin operated rides. It's like a four foot Mario Kart and it has Mario on the back. And this is one of the only ones that we know of that has survived. And I bought it and it won't fit in the house, <laughs> like in the uh, game room. So it's in the garage. <laughs> so the and, garage um, has to become part of the game room. Yeah. So now I got to take over the whole garage. So now and, I, have to, uh, I sold your car and you decided to ride a bicycle. And <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I just ride I Mario, the Mario Kart. Day. Yeah, I just hopped on a Mario Kart and I just you know scoot into work. Yeah, <laughs> making me think of the last game. Where every time he like filled up a room, he'd do like a new room extension, and then yeah, there'd be a new video in twelve months. I'm building a new room for the game room, and these houses just keep getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> I live in the shed out back, so I could take over the whole house. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so it that. just. It kind of just like, you know, went crazy and I met all these amazing people and I started learning more and more. And I'm sure you guys know, too. It's like once you see something you want, you just want even more. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And especially with time, too, because time can build a collection. Like money can build a collection, but time can build a collection more than mm -hmm. money can, if that makes sense. I go through yeah, like a know. phase when I see something I want. I'm always like, oh, I, that's, I don't want that. That's too much. I don't need that thing. I, it's, no, I'm not going to buy that. And then I'm like, just keep looking at it. Is it on sale? Or is it any cheaper than the last time I looked? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't need that. I don't want to buy that. I don't need that. I'm not getting that. And then I like, keep doing that for a month or two. And then I'm like, oh, that's a really good deal on that. <laughs> oh, shit. I got to get it now. <laughs> I buy it. That's what I always do. I'm like, Oh, that's just, a, I can't not buy it now. That's too, it's too cheap. Somebody put it up for too cheap. They gave, I have no choice. I have no choice. I have to buy it. <laughs> and then you get it and you're like, why did I buy this? Nah, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm not going to play it. This is a silly game. Well, that's the thing is that I'm like, yes, now I finally have this. I can sleep. Put it on the shelf. Play something else. Play Stardew Valley for the thousandth time. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, Brandy, I, I, I wanted to ask um, how you got into YouTube. Um, so mine's like a crazy story. <laughs> so I started posting the pictures on Instagram because someone told me that there were people on Instagram like posting pickups. So I was like, all right, I'll try social media. Well, because I was posting a bunch of pictures. Oh, your mic went. Yep. And we're back. Is that, can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See it, what happens, it, it guys. Like it's new. the 35 um, kiosk in our house draw too much power, and it's like pew, took the mic off. They did. They did. <laughs> Someone turned on it's the like Mario. It's like she's card. talking. Let's hurry up. <laughs> no, so, some random person, um, I guess in my state, he messaged me and said, "Hey, have you ever thought about doing YouTube?" 
And I was like, I've actually thought about it before, but I don't really know like what to do. I don't know if there's other people doing this. Like I had no idea. I didn't watch YouTube. I only used it for like how to videos on like how to unicycle and make balloon animals and dumb things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Because I was weird and I like to learn different skills. So can you make balloon animals while unicycling? Is that what you're saying? Because I can. We're gonna, yes. We're going to have to see that on stream actually. Yeah. <laughs> I can. Um, I also have a five foot unicycle where the seat is where my head is in real life. Oh my goodness. Um, and that is something pretty wild too. So yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought YouTube was, like how-to videos and like mm -hmm. stupid videos. I didn't know that there were like collectors and video games and all that. So this this guy pretty much reached out and said, I, I do Magic the Gathering. I do history of it. And mm -hmm. I think you would be a great fit. And I was like, well, I don't know why you're saying that because all I do is post pictures. <laughs> so we met up for lunch and he showed me like his channel. And he said, how about I film a game room tour? for your channel and then i'll edit some of your videos and we'll see what happens and we can discuss like percentages later i said okay what do i got to lose so he films my first game room tour and i'm nervous as anything because i don't know anything i don't know like public speaking like in front of a camera with a strange person i never like met before <laughs> And um, the video does pretty decent when I first post it. And people are like, we want more. And I'm like, yay, this is great. I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he filmed <laughs> another video. And then he just kind of like went ghost. And then I reached out and I was like, hey, like any updates? And he was like, oh, it's been a couple weeks. I'm going to try and get it you know, posted in the next day or two. And I was like, okay. And then people are messaging me, like, when are you posting more? And I'm like, I have no idea. Mm. So he was just like, hey, sorry, I didn't realize it was going to take a lot of time away from my other channel. Good luck to you. I wish you well. And I was like, oh, no, I'm in this. I'm doing this, and I don't know what I'm doing at all. I don't even know how to film. I don't have a camera. I don't have anything. I guess I'll mm. film on my phone and hope for the best. So for, like, the first couple years, that's what I did. I just filmed what people kind of wanted to see like people would message me and be like oh we want to see recent pickups or we want to see this sign or we want to see this close up and I tried my best and I just kind of did what the people wanted <laughs> and then as I kept going through you know I just started meeting more and more like cool people <clears throat> and um you know people were just like oh, this is how I film, or this is what I use. And, you know, you just meet more awesome YouTubers and they kind of give you a little bit of like tips here and there. And next thing you know, you open up more, you feel more comfortable. You're like laughing. You're more happy in the videos. You're not like in you're busting out mode. the unicycle. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Um, 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 starts to disappear. Yeah. Or the like stuttering on your own name several times. Like you just can't say your name. <laughs> like, you know. And it just kind of works out and then things start doing pretty well. And last year I had one of like the best years I did three times the amount that I did in the past, in like the prior four or five years, I did that three times that last year. And then, you know, I had um, Hulu, I was in a Hulu episode for my game collection and stuff. And I was invited out to a game convention and, Next thing you know, I'm on panels at game conventions, and I had ABC News come out to my house, and they filmed my game room tour, and that Hulu episode that I'm in, it was with, like, Taylor Swift, but I, it's not associated sure. at all. I did not meet her, <laughs> but, like, I just thought it was, like, the craziest thing that they, like, put me in, like, a little segment, like, on Hulu, you know, for my game collection, That's and then... Sick. Yeah, and then I have, like, all these other people reach out for documentaries that are coming out, and, like, all this crazy stuff happened, and I'm like, wow, this is something, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that's just, a, it honestly is just a testament to how amazing your collection is, too. Like, it's pretty wild, guys. Like, she's got <laughs> systems. She's got games for everything, too, and, like you're going for like multiple complete sets like aren't you you're like what, what a couple hundred games away from the SN snes set right now Something yeah like i think that. i'm like right now because i filmed another video today because i found like six more games at another game store so i think i'm at like 190 ish 
or something. I'm like cl around that, but I'm also um like 30 games away for the Japanese N64 set, so I can have a worldwide set of complete. Ooh. And then um, well, you've done the PAL N64 already. I have the exclusives. There are a couple that are Japanese and PAL, um, so I do have one of those i think there's one or two more that i need um so i'm just trying to get it like collectively like you know i'm not going to buy the same japanese game if i already have it for like north america so yeah. it'll okay, be like, okay. collectively the complete um i think set. um like snowboard kids was only released in australia and the u.s version is a lot cheaper than the australian version that was only yep. sold in like blockbuster over here or something yeah the price differences between regions, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I spent this much on this game, and then over in Japan, it's, you know, $20 instead of $300. <laughs> like, yeah. like, certain oh my goodness. Super it Nintendo. It's logistically stuff. better to just get the, the cheaper version if you can play all of them. And then <laughs> yeah. Play the same anyway. It's wild. Yeah. I just, these prices, some of them are just the craziest things I've ever seen. You don't see as much wild. in modern systems because of, um, region free and you know a lot yep. of people just go and buy the cheap version but when you go back in the day that wasn't a thing you know and international shipping wasn't as readily available as it is today and international relations wasn't as easy in the 90s as it is today and different things like that so it makes sense yeah it's 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 so much but i'm really enjoying it because i'm also like trying to play little bits of these games as i get them so that I can like deem them myself. Are they fun? Are they not fun? Do I want to go back to this at a later date with more time? Because just because a game is deemed a terrible game does not mean that it's not fun. Like mm -hmm. you can have really bad games, but if you play them with the right people, they could be like some of the most fun games or they could remind you of something that you played back in the day or it could bring back all these like memories if you did play it. So Almost every that's... single game is someone's favorite game. Yep. You know, it mightn't be everyone's favorite game, but someone out there had that game 10 years ago, 20, 30 years ago, and then they played the shit out of it and they loved it, you know. Mm -hmm. it might have got terrible reviews. It might have been the only game that they owned. Probably exactly. like a few games that don't fit in that category. But... <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, when the PS Classic came out, like everybody was like the games on it are so bad the games what a terrible game list and like everybody was particularly they were crapping on that intelligence mm -hmm. cube game they're like why is this game on there that's such a stupid game to put on there i love that game it's like one of my favorite games i love <laughs> I like when that I, game when i was a kid i, I like, love yeah, that I game it. on ps1 i was obsessed with that game so like when I, I heard it was on there i was like yeah it's a banger and then so many people were like it's the crappiest game it's so it's deep above us why is it Crash Bandicoot or bam, bam, bam? I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> but hey, you know what? That game's really expensive still. Like, uh, it's like an eighty dollar game. I think now, hundred if you get a nice one from. Yeah. So I ain't the only one to like that game. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. But like you said, it's funny. Like, like it's it's what you played when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. You can really like and like you if you had a game as a kid you put time into it and you gave it its chance like and even if it was a little like rough around the edges you might f play in a left or right to like flesh it out where it's good and nowadays mm -hmm. you ain't people gonna no time for that like if you play a game and you ain't you, people aren't vibing with it for like in the first five minutes they shut it off and they're, they're never playing it again yeah especially old games it's like no no just grind for a few hours and then it's it's fun once you like and they're like what no i'm not doing that like so I don't know. especially on like pc is the worst for it because steam has a i believe it's a two-hour return policy if you don't you. like something within the first two hours you get your money back easily wow so, you know a lot of people abuse that system to just try mm -hmm. as many games as they can or do a thing you know let's try and beat the game and return it and, and make it free <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. It's, I mean, the same thing with like TV shows and streaming and movies. You know, it's like back in the day, we appreciated what we had. We might have only gotten a few games a year or like one system every so many years for like a holiday or something. At least that, that was me. Like I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't have money and stuff just to spend on this stuff. And, you know, I got a game. 
I didn't know if it was bad or good or whatever. I had to enjoy it. So I played it and I played it and I beat it. I played it with other people. We would trade games temporarily, trade them back, you know, so your parents don't think that like you, you took a game or something. And it's like you just appreciated that. If you didn't like the movie at the movie theater, you just had to watch it. It's like nowadays people, they get so tired and bored and they just move on and they don't appreciate things. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's crazy. We're in a whole different time. I miss those good old days, you know? Yeah. Where today <laughs> people would rather watch a 60 second video than sit down and watch a movie. But I think that's in a, in, I like think it's hurt the gaming industry because people are so quick to give up that like they games are too easy now. I'm like mm -hmm. just on that part. I'm like in that and yeah, they <laughs> they have difficulty settings, but usually mm -hmm. the difficulty settings they don't make the game more interesting. They just make it like the HP numbers. They just fudge the numbers to make it harder. They don't make it like a more difficult experience is what i'm saying they'll just add more yeah. bad guys or something like that it doesn't i don't know what i'm trying to say it's it's like i like games that are just designed to be what they are and that is what they are and that's it like that's how the old games were there wasn't 12 difficulty settings it was like maybe two mm -hmm. like easy easy and normal and back in the day it was like if you played on easy like you would be like come on come on like back in the day when i when i play games i wouldn't play them on easy unless it was a game like that you like you had like one continue on the normal mode and I could not beat it. And then I'd be like, all right, whatever, I'm playing on easy just because I'm <laughs> I don't want to beat the game. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. It's just I definitely feel like that's the case for your triple A games these days, like your Sony exclusives and not just easy to finish the game, they're easy to get the platinum trophies for now. Yep. The platinum trophies just feel like a quest that you just go down the list and tick them off. You don't have to, you know. Go and grind this thing over here for six hours and you might get a chance of a drop and then beat the game on the hardest difficulty and don't lose a life. Like these things aren't, just aren't around anymore because they're too hard. But then I feel like there are still genres out there that do the opposite, like the Dark Souls series and From Software games. Are, you know, they release a new game, it gets Game of the Year and it doesn't hold people's hands. It doesn't have an easy mode. Mm -hmm. People love that. So there's definitely... An audience out there who want that and they are getting it and like it's the same for shoot 'em ups and um plenty of different genres out there there's hard platformers like super meat boy mm -hmm. and things like that i i agree and that's the thing though like so from a business perspective i would make a game with easy modes and i would make a game with as much appeal because i'd want to sell it to as many people but yeah. i'm glad that there are now people are recognizing that there is an audience that don't want that. There is mm -hmm. an audience that want it to be hard. Like, especially like shmups. Like if you have a shmups too easy, like, I'm sorry, I don't want to, I'm, I'll, if I beat a shmup, like in the first day I play it, like it's not. A good yeah. Shmup. Something's off. <laughs> it is not a good shmup. Like a good shmup. Like I have to play a couple, like, like, hour, like 20, Over. 30 hours, 40 <laughs> hours, sometimes hundreds. There are ones that I've been crying my whole life and I haven't beaten them yet. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten so close so many times. It's tragic. <laughs> but, like, I've died on the last boss on like a there's like a dozen shmups where I've made it to the last boss and I haven't like just sealed the deal. Like it's so frustrating. But uh yeah, that's that's a good game though, because like it keeps me coming back for more. And like I dust off my I'm like, oh man, today's the day I'm gonna get at you. And then I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I like the challenge. I want that. I want it to because it feels so good when you win. I've tried to explain that before. Like, there's nothing like when I beat like um, a game that's too easy. I'm just like, oh, cool. What next? It doesn't. It's fun, and I'm like, I had a good time. But it doesn't yeah, give it doesn't me like feel that. Like you earned it. Correct. I don't feel like, like you, I won. A you gotta battle. feel like you earn it. Like you don't well, want to participation trophy. I don't give those games my full attention either. I'll mm -hmm. turn a YouTube video on and start watching that as I'm playing because. You don't have to give it your full attention because you're not going to mm -hmm. die and blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly you're missing things and you're not enjoying it as much. And, you know, I want a game where I have to concentrate the entire time I'm playing. Otherwise, I'm going to fail and I can't do it. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know, like it's nice when you do something and you like know it was hard to do. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're like, oh, my God. Finally. Jesus. like it's just it feel it's just there's something so satisfying 
Like mm-hmm. when you know it's hard and everybody knows it's hard. And they're like, did you beat that thing? You're like, yes. They're like, no, nothing else needs to be said. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, it's just, <laughs> wow. Like, good for you. Um, uh, what was it? I think um, some, some like, um, there's some shmup, um, uh, one of the Dodon Pachi games. Someone just beat the last boss uh, today after like 15 years. No one's ever done it. Someone wow. just did it like the other day. <laughs> like, Game's been out for like 15, 16 years, and no one's ever been able to be, not in one and one continue. Like someone beat like yeah. the whole game on like the ultra hard difficulty, the ultra secret boss at the end, who and the pattern is like any human. Like I, you know, it's one of those when I watch people do it, I like I laugh. I'm like, I'll just never. It's like I don't know. I play guitar, and there's certain good people who play when they play. I'm like, ha ha. That's I never am going to do that. <laughs> it's just never going to happen. <laughs> like, that's just too good. I don't know how it's something where they use a task machine and it takes the task machine like three years to do it perfectly. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's just it's another level. Like some people are just gifted, I guess, like savants yep. at things. It's like someone who's just can play that. I don't know. There's, some people are just on another level and I'm fine yeah, with not being that, on that that's level. The thing, Joe. That guy's probably just grinded it for 15 years. And yeah. made it his life goal to do that. And he's like finally just done it because he's done that stage literally like 10,000 times. And those inhuman movements he can do with his eyes closed in his sleep because that's what he does. Yeah, yeah. And there's like respect and stuff behind it. Like it's not, it's not just like, oh, he just got that just because. It's like you could tell the hard work, the dedication, the, you know, all that stuff that goes into this. Like you can appreciate that more because. Mm you know it's like more difficult and it takes time and you know it's it's something that you know that you can't do so you just you know you respect that exactly mm-hmm. that feeling that you mentioned joe where you overcome something that you're like that was tough i, I get that feeling when i play competitive geo i guess so now that i'm like i have entered the top ranking system of the world and i play against the top players in the world and players that have been to the world cup and I'll get into these matches and I'm like, all right, I have to lock in, time to lock in. And it's like, you know, you have to fully concentrate for the mm-hmm. 10 yeah. 15 minutes. And when you do it and you win, it feels so awesome. I'm like, get up out of my chair and yell and <laughs> scream. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, dude, I like, um, I love, I'm into Kaizo Mario a lot. I don't know if you watch that and me watch that. I love like the Mario hacks and the Mario ROM hacks and stuff where the, it's just Mario like, but absurd where like, there's like a 10 minute map with no floor. They're just bouncing through the air off turtle shells. And like, I'm like, how are you? This is insane. I've seen and, it. I uh, can never do it. It's the craziest uh, stuff I've ever seen. I always watch it and I convince myself I can do it. I'm like, look at how easy they make. It's, it's not that I go and I try and I can't beat one level. Like, <laughs> I'm like I get Super Mario Maker out and I'm like, let's do this. And like three hours later, I'm like, no, nah, I can't do this. You know, I just don't like the the levels Nintendo created. <laughs> mm-hmm. But there's something beautiful when you watch people execute insanely. Mm-hmm. It's like, like I said, like when you watch this, like what I call them super players in the shmup world, like when you watch them dodge these insane patterns, mm-hmm. it's like there's something so satisfying about it. I don't know. Like, it's like, oh, I don't know, man. Like, I'm just like, it. it it's like, watching someone dance a beautiful ballet or someone sing beautifully or like do anything play a play a nice violin part beautifully i i don't know it's just so amazing to see someone execute oh, something a Rubik's like cube in five seconds it yeah what it is. It's, it's, yeah appreciate it. yeah it's cool i just like and but i'm like that you know i have appreciation for anybody who has skill in anything yeah like i would i like don't care really what it is if you're an amazing chef i will watch you cook if you're really good at it i'll be like wow like and I do. I watch I'm really so many into the YouTube shows. genre of um, <laughs> watching speed running, in particular in mm-hmm. games like um, Trackmania. Mm-hmm. I've never played Trackmania in my life, but I've watched hundreds and hundreds of hours of YouTube videos of people going for world records and seeing like how many years these records take and the research that goes into it. And, like I mentioned before, the Taskbot, which is a computer program that like does the movements to the frame second perfect and you can put them in mm-hmm. and be like all right let me do one frame to the left one frame to the right and then they make it so you can actually do these things and and then they show them to the public and it's like it's possible if you do it exactly like this and 
people do it and it's amazing and yeah i, I just find that stuff so fascinating yeah i get like nervous when i watch those like i just went to this uh game convention and they had um is it games done quick or something yeah that's yeah, yeah. that's uh i watch uh um grand pooh bear i'm pretty sure he does he's he, was he affiliated with that maybe he isn't i don't know I'm not sure which one it was, but there was one there mm -hmm. and the whole room was packed and I popped in for like, just like a few minutes and boom, going through like the level and mm -hmm. everyone's cheering. And I'm like, yeah, like I joined in. I didn't even know what's, what was going on. I just like, mm -hmm. was like yeah, I looked good. Yeah. That was quick. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like we're Quicker just me. like, I don't even know. Like, I'm just like, yeah, it just gets y'all hyped up. And like the whole room was. It, it was so great. Cool. Like the lights were off, like the mood, the setting, like I just mm. felt like the emotion and like the tense, mm. like I was stressed out, but then I like, I felt like we were all part of it. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> it's to me, I think it's so cool. What gaming has evolved into from what it was like I, when we were kids, man, do I wish there was a competitive gaming scene and there was like esports and all those conventions and stuff. Cause God, man, like, Oh, I was so good at Tekken back in the day. I could have <laughs> been a contender. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's one yeah. of those things where like, I think it is so cool that now there's a, could be a room full of people just being like, yo, I heard you were good at Mario son. Like, <laughs> show me how to, how, how to jump on some turtle shells. Let's do this. I think that's so cool. Like, yeah. uh, you know, because back then, everyone just was like, it's so stupid. It's a waste of time. You're going to yeah. rot your brain. You're going to go blind. You're sitting too close to the TV. Uh, you grow blah, blah, up. It. You're just a kid, yeah. you know, like. All that violence games are going to make you violent. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> like, what? <laughs> That was always my favorite. Like I was one of those kids who was like always like watching horror movies he wasn't supposed to watch and playing video games. Yeah, he that's wasn't okay supposed though, right? <laughs> yeah, and I it was like, but like, and there, and I was always like, no, that's not what's gonna make me violent. What's gonna make me violent is if you take away my video games. <laughs> that's what's gonna make me violent. <laughs> but playing like dodgeball and all this other like violent sports, yeah, and, like, you need to be more aggressive and stuff. Oh, that's wrestling, okay. yeah, exactly, actual physical, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. At the same time, I was like taking karate where I was being taught to beat the crap out of people. That's fine. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's dish That's discipline. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, I just heard well. you talking about how, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can make something out of if you're good at a game these days. And it doesn't really matter what it is. And it just made mm -hmm. me think, like, this evening, I'm competing in a GeoGuessr tournament that's got a cash prize, you know. Wow. Like, it's just a random Sunday night, and these things are around every single week. And it doesn't matter the game you're in. If there's a community out there, there's probably tournaments out there. Mm -hmm. Plenty of games out there have their own esports scenes these days. And I want competitive. Have their own with. university degrees, and you know you can get a university for Fortnite or Counter Strike these days. Like they're not and just who games or careers. Yeah. Like who would have thought that this was gonna like if you go back in time and you tell people like this is the future. There's going to be YouTubers that make money. There's going to be um, competitors playing video games. There's going to be stadiums lined up with people watching people play video games. Play They're Dota. Compete for money. There are going to be like big people. Video gamers. There's going to be video gamers that have more fans than movie stars. Yeah. That's what the people want to see. And it's true. People would be like, you're crazy. Lock this person up. Like witchcraft, <laughs> they'd be like, "No, I don't believe any of that." <laughs> it's awesome. And then, if we told them what would happen to the TV and movie industry, would they believe us? <laughs> I'm like, they're gonna run out of ideas in about 2016, and then they're just gonna like make sequels to movies you liked when you were seven, and they're all gonna be B tier, mediocre, unemotional films that you're forget about in five minutes. Uh, like I, I, we're talking about, like. I don't want to talk about movies too much, but uh, like um, they they made like well, a new talk about music. Like the music industry no. today is awful. Artists don't really make money from their songs anymore. They don't make money from Spotify. Like they no, they make it from, from you. Yeah, they have to go and tour fifty times a year and sell merchandise. With yep. It isn't their CDs, like other things, to make money. That's why Taylor Swift goes on so many tours and. All your big artists are suddenly like touring again. I think Snoop Dogg came out and said that 
He had like over a billion streams last year and didn't even make a hundred thousand dollars from it. It's just wild. It's wild. Ridiculous, you know. And then you hear all this stuff about Nickelodeon and all these other things, and you're like, my childhood was a lie. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. I watched that thing this week. Oh my god. Like, I didn't watch it yet, but I've heard clips. I definitely need to watch the whole thing though. Like I need to. Because I'm curious. I, I need to know this stuff. But I okay. watched these programs as a kid, and I'm like, I remember that episode. And they're doing this weird shit that I'm like, today, I'm like, that's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the wildest stuff that, like, I don't know. I wish we knew more of what we know now back then. But, you know. The... Oh, we're all so, we were, everyone was so much na more naive and innocent before the internet mm -hmm. as a species. Yeah. I we were all, I think, because we had the internet back then, but social media wasn't around. Fair, fair. The internet right away didn't wreck everything, you know, but like, um, yeah, it was okay. Yeah. I just like, uh, they say ignorance is bliss, and mm -hmm. it's true. Yeah. It's true. I was, I, we were all happier when we knew less, I feel. We, yep. you know, it's also, it's interesting too, because like, this, I don't want to get too philo philosophical or anything, but like back in the day, like you were, primarily inundated with your own life and your own life's issues and problems mm -hmm. primarily that was the focus of your day and now with the internet it's like you have access to the world's problems at your fingertips yes. like you have you wake up and you're reading about what's wrong in this country in this country in this country in this country in this thing in this state in this place in this place this what wrong and it's just like oh it's a lot to worry about uh i i liked it better when i just was worried about like you know the six people i knew <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Yeah, I, I feel like today you can curate what you see. I practically mm. stopped using Facebook, and if I see something that I not that I disagree with, but say I use my sport team for example, I follow Chelsea, and say I see people posting negative stuff about the team, I just unfollow them because I'm not in there to see negative people. I want to see positive things, and yeah, I'm like that for everything. So. Like my Twitter feed is full of things that I want to see now because it's curated for what you like. And I, I, I can't use Facebook because Facebook doesn't work that way. <laughs> so I would just stop using it. And I pre pretty much never use Instagram anymore either because you don't like I used to love Instagram. You jump on there and see your friends post. You don't do that anymore. You know, I just, so I just don't use it. And I use Discord a lot because there's no ads on Discord. It's just posts from what people say. I use YouTube a lot with my algorithm and it's videos that I want to watch. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can control. Yeah, now it's like the news days. and all that stuff is just, it's so like upsetting and you just see so much. And it's like it, back in the day, you know, you would wait for like the five o'clock news or like the six o'clock news. Now it's like you have stuff at your fingertips all the time, whether you want to see something negative or not, like it just pops right up. And they always say, like someone somewhere out there said this, like for every negative thing that you see, you need at least three positive things to like counteract that. Like, it's just, it's so different. Like, so you just, you get all this like negative stuff dropped on you where, you know, you need so much positive to even like make you feel halfway decent, like about that. So it's just, there's just so much. And I just, you know, like she's saying, I miss the good old days, you know, just the simpler times mm -hmm. where you just had fun yeah. with it. You appreciated more. You didn't know about the real life, you know, problems. And, you know, you just had fun with it. Go out and play with your friends. And the only rule is you got to be mm -hmm. home before the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that's a lot. Of, um, it's, it's coming back full circle. I think that's a big motivating factor for a lot of people who are into retro gaming. Mm -hmm. is that we do like legitimately long for the past like we really do yeah. like i like i try to explain when i like my playstation magazines there's a great example like people are like why would you want these things i'm like because man when i open these up and i'm reading these articles and i'm like it's it is like it it is a time machine it literally takes me back then and it makes me feel the way i felt back then about life and like you know i think all of us collectively had a better outlook on life 20 years ago than we all do now <laughs> yeah. we had a hopeful positive view of how things would be and it's it's turned out not so great for a lot of people 
So I just think that like, it really is like, like that longing for the past isn't just rose tinted glasses. People like really were happier back in the day. We like legitimately. And so they want to try to recapture that feeling. Mm -hmm. And this is one way to do that even, uh, but the problem is it's not, it doesn't last as long. So you got to buy more. And you gotta get more and that's what keeps happening you're just chasing that feeling you're constantly chasing that feeling yep um and you guys so. remember a time where we actually like lived about phones and internet i know can you believe that we lived for that time and mm, oh, I like do. i remember oh, getting I? my first phone and i didn't even keep it on all the time it was off like all day and then if i needed to make a phone call i would turn it on and like playing like the snake game on the phone like yeah, i beat that snake would that was like wild like playing that but like you know it, it wasn't always with you now it's like if i don't have my phone with me like i mean that never happens it's always with me like if i were to forget it somewhere i would probably panic mm. that it's not there next to me you know it's, anxiety it's the first thing i see when i wake up and it's the last thing i see before bed like those that's how it is. It sleeps next to me on a pillow. Like that is my baby. Like <laughs> I'm always on my phone. It's always with me. And like, you get those like phantom, like they, I guess they call them like phantom where you feel like your phone's vibrating or like your phone's gone, but it's like your mind or something. I don't know, whatever it is, but it's just like, you know, you just, you feel like you have to have it with you all the time. I, I I'm it's probably counterproductive because I sit on the computer all day, but. I, I don't use my phone as much anymore because I work from home. But um, like, as soon as I leave this room, I'm, I'm, I'm on my phone. So mm -hmm. it's probably counterproductive because I'm doing exactly the same things on the computer that I would have been doing. Yep, technology. The one thing I don't do is I don't watch um, any of that short form content on the computer. It's, no shorts? It's weird when you open it on like YouTube and you open it short. It just looks weird. And I'm like, oh, what am I doing? I close it. But on the phone, you're just subconsciously scrolling, and I'll, yep, just... I'll catch myself watching these videos. I'm like, stop, stop watching a 10 second video when doom scrolling. Like, it's called doom. Staged. It's a word for it. It's yeah. called doom scrolling, where you just like shut off your brain and you just scrolling through little videos and you just eat like, hey, eh, eh. <laughs> your brain's not even on, and you have to stop yourself. You have to be like, I have to, I gotta go do the dishes. What am I doing with my life? Like, it literally sucks. Literally. You in, like, literally. God. It's like a um people who do it all the time lose their the um memory retention and their concentration levels become really bad. I I read this thing and someone was like, My a movie came out that I wanted to watch and I realized fifteen minutes in that because of all the shorts I watched that I couldn't follow the story, I'd already lost concentration, I couldn't watch the movie anymore. Yeah, i <laughs> I find myself trailing off in like long like movies like on Netflix or something. I'll just like 10 minutes in, I'm like, oh, let me check my phone. Oh, what's going And then like you perk up because you're like, oh, wait, I'm watching a movie. <laughs> like, and then you're like, wait, what just happened? And you got to like rewind, but you're watching. And it's not even video game, you know, stuff on your phone sometimes. Like it, it just goes off. Like it's just something different. It's like, you know, some like quiz or game or like something real stupid and you're just like watching it and you're like wait a minute i was watching video games on here what happened to my feed what am i watching now this is the the stupidest thing mary I had an argument now. with a neighbor in wisconsin oh <laughs> yeah, exactly that's that's they uh, that algorithm try to feed you crap that will distract you and it's just like stupid pointless drama that gets you sucked in for no reason it's yep. terrible um so <laughs> Oh God! I don't, anyway, um, let's talk about games. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> would you say like the N sixty four is your favorite console? Like, I know you have tons of different things. Is that like your most nostalgic one, or, or? I think that's my most nostalgic. It's not my first one that I played. That would be the Nintendo Entertainment System. Mm -hmm. But I would say that N sixty four really means a lot because that's like my first home console that like my parents got me. And growing up, I played at all my friends' houses. We would, I would bring the controller over. I'd bring a memory card. I'd bring a game, go to their house, play on their console. We'd trade off games. You know, we just, we'd have a great time playing. So I feel like that one always brings back those memories for me. But mm -hmm. I'm really appreciating, like, the Super Nintendo. Because 
I'm going for that full set. And I just didn't realize how many great games there are, especially Same. compared to like a shorter library, like, you know, the N64. It doesn't have that many games, but some of these systems have so many fantastic games and so many of them. So it's just, you know, I'd say N64, but I'm starting to appreciate a lot more. <laughs> Randy, I want to ask a question about your full set goals. Is that, um, Complete in box? Does it lose cards? Does it include manuals and everything? And then conditional um, as well? It kind of varies. So with disc games, they have to be complete in box. Um, cartridge games, they're not always in the box. Um, I just don't have that kind of money <laughs> to do complete in box for everything. So it is a lot of loose cartridges. Now, Sega Genesis would have to be in the boxes and Sega Master System would have to be in the boxes because they had those cases. So if the it's best, like best boxes in gaming, I know, and they work yeah. so good. They like mm -hmm. they were made for it. Like everything should have been modeled after something like that. Yep. But I'd say if it's more of like a plastic case, I try to do that. But if it's a cardboard box, I'm not as pressed upon it. Yeah, okay, that's fair. I mean, it, it it makes your goals more reasonable. That's definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know I don't I don't have that kind of money, <laughs> but uh, you know I I try my best for for what I can. <laughs> well, you find collectors who have full completing box sets completed their sets ten years ago when the yep. prices of completing box games were less than loose carts are today. So it's like you know, and you like people out there always like to compare their collections to other people, but you got to realize that you might be collecting in a completely different era and different things like that. <laughs> was important to just go on your own journey and collect your, your financial constraints and everything yeah she's she's asking that question because they're currently in the laundry room i took over half of the laundry room so i have all my super nintendo cartridges on shelves <laughs> and my nintendo cartridges so she's asking that question because she knows because <laughs> 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 hey, i don't know, know i don't know where they're gonna go after that room fills up I have maybe a bathroom. Who knows? We have no idea. Maybe the fridge. I'll just start putting games in the fridge. I mean, hmm. you know, there you go. there's plenty of room under the sink. I mean, you can make it work. Yeah, you don't need all cabinet. those cabinets there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm sure there might be an extension in the future to the back of the house or something. Yeah. <laughs> It'll have to be a much bigger house. So it'll just, you know, you just gotta do what high schools do is start buying them little trailer things and start plopping them all over your properties. Yeah, just put a couple things. You know, put one in the driveway. Down. Yeah, sure. Or oh, you know <laughs> what I've heard? I've, like what system it is? Like I've heard there's this is. really cool uh, <laughs> thing that people are doing called squatting. Now you can just find an empty house in your neighborhood and just kind yeah, of move in and fill it, it with games and be like, it's "My house now!" No, 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 no. I I have a lease. These games have been here for years. <laughs> Sorry, this is how you do yeah. it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. It'll be fine. <laughs> I will make it work. If I have to hang things on the ceiling, I will do that. We were talking about that last week with a toy collector who somebody did that has yeah. these games like hung up on the ceiling. Has yeah. Star Wars figures. He had his Star Wars figures hanging from the ceiling. His entire <laughs> Star Wars set. Yeah, I'd be afraid that they'd fall, and like you know, I'd just be laying there at night sleeping, and all of a sudden, like the Technodrome or something comes tumbling down on me, or like <laughs> some big TMNT just like pops me in the face or something, like. That would be Cow bunga, dude. <laughs> Turtle power. <laughs> so, um, how long you been into toys? Is that like a recent development or? Um, so once again, back in the day, I have older cousins and they had a lot of turtle toys growing up and mm. just like, and I ended up getting like power Rangers and stuff growing up. And I was obsessed with the movies and, it just happened. So I started collecting games and then that same place that I went into, they also sold toys. And then I'm like, wow, I remember this as a kid. So I bought one and then I bought a whole lot of things and then mm. I bought more and more. And then I was like, wow, this is cool. I remember this. I would dress up as this, you know, I had this. And that just spiraled out of control too. So, That's and then it, it like changed. You're, we have a similar personality. If I start collecting something, it is, uh, it is on. 
Yeah. Like, no, I am going to go hard just, until I have to like physically be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, same with Pokemon it. cards. I did the same thing. I was like, let me complete a, a full set. And then it was base set. And then it was base set two. And then it was jungle. And then it was team rocket. And then it was, um, all these other sets, Southern Islands, like just all these sets that I had to complete. Don't know why, but my like completionist brain was like, let me just collect this and collect this. And where are they at? Like on the shelf at the bottom down there in a binder that I never look at. Like, and then you had to get all the games, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's how it goes. <laughs> well, that's just the logically thing to go. You got to get all the Pokemon games. Like, why not? I just want to make it more difficult. I'm like, Oh, I haven't finished completing this, but what else can I start? <laughs> I'm still on that quest to get every single Pokemon game. Because it has to be complete in box and it has to be in yes. a condition that I'm happy with. And those prices are mm -hmm. way more than what I'm comfortable in paying. And yeah, there's fakes out insane. there. And it's yeah, it's not an easy thing. Way too much for I don't even understand why. Just way too much. Because it's it's not like some of these games are so limited. Like there were millions all. of copies yeah. of these games. They are not rare. Like people, I'm guilty of it too. People say this game is rare. Just because a game's rare doesn't mean it's expensive. And just because there's an expensive game doesn't make it rare. It's you know, it's wild to me that we can have certain things. Like right next to me, I have a Taco Bell PS4, the golden. Oh, like, you have the gold four. one. That's right. Yes. Oh, and it's goodness. in the original shipping box from Taco Bell. I never, mm -hmm. I opened that box because I bought it from someone who won it like immediately for, I think 150 bucks or 200 bucks at the time. And I never even like popped the box open. So I don't know what number out of like 6,500 it is. But it's crazy. There's only 6,500 of those. And it's not the most expensive thing in the world. But mm -hmm. then there's something that has millions of copies. And it goes for more money. And you're like, what? Like, there's only 6,500 of these. But there's millions of that. So you just, you can never base it on that. I find with Pokemon, it's the game that's, like, hoarded more than any other game. Like, You'll see people post their Pokemon collections. And I see this all the time on Instagram or Facebook. And it's like five copies of each game. Yep. <laughs> and it's like, okay, that's another reason why the prices are like through the roof. <laughs> or, or when they go to sell them and the collection's just like 70 Pokemon games. It's like 10 copies of this one, five copies of this one, four copies of this one. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's. I, I mean, I, I'll pick up doubles 100%, more. but I I, I don't hoard my doubles. I, I get a double and I put it on eBay that night and get rid of it because you know, I just want to collect one of every game. I don't want five mm -hmm. copies of the same game. Sorry, everyone over this. I only buy doubles on accident. <laughs> just, <laughs> same, just, yeah. I have doubles, but I'm not hoarding them. I'm just dumb. Just yeah, not smart. Same. I usually, I usually end up with doubles, and then I go, "Well, this is going in the trade stack because I'm too embarrassed to return it or do something." So I just keep it on the side, and I'm like, "Yeah, somebody will want this someday." Or I end up just literally trading it in at a loss to the store down the street for something else. Big killer yeah. now on the head. Rare is all about supply and demand. I'm trying to sell mm -hmm. a lot of my old limited run games, and. I like have to keep lowering the prices every month because no one's buying them and they're rare. They have oh, like three thousand in the world. That's rare, right? But if you go on eBay, there's a hundred of them. Yeah. That really rare? No, it's not desirable. So it's you know, it might be a low print, but you can always find it because no one wants them. You guys send me a list, man. I might buy some stuff off you. Yeah, yeah. Now that I'm getting cheap prices. <laughs> yeah, now that you're like exactly, now you're lowering the prices, <laughs> now we can talk. Yeah, right. Lower it a little more and we'll talk. I'll take how, it. All. How low are you talking, my friend? <laughs> and you know it's funny. Buy a few, you, I can do a deal. You finally <laughs> shipped that tech in over to clean now that yeah, yeah, you said now I'll clean. now I'll finally buy into the game from you after all that, of course. <laughs> now that the one game you've got's already been set. Oh, that's Whatever. Cool. Yeah, so I had I bought a game, shipped it to Figsy in Australia. He shipped it to another uh, 
person who's been on the show, a guest fan friend of ours, and he's going to ship it to me in the United States. <laughs> wow. That has made its way all the way. This is, uh, this is, this is collecting in 2024. If you're an international collector, mm-hmm. um, which is, uh, well, yeah, actually you're kind of going through that too, getting the Japanese N64 games, but that's like, um, a whole other world that I love. I love collecting Im- imports now. Like mm-hmm. that's like one of my most interesting things because I don't know. So, so when you're into a hobby for a while, you kind of feel like, you know, a, a lot and you're mm-hmm. like, ah, I just know, you know, the N64 library, like, you know, it like, it's not, there's no new information coming out about it. Like it's not, yep. not that it's not interesting. It's just, you kind of know everything. So then you can expand. You're like, what happened in yeah. Japan? What's going on here? What's all these? And that just makes it like so much more fun. And it's like insane too. Like even just for instance, like the Sega Pico mm-hmm. didn't do very well over here, but in Japan they have so much when it comes to that. They have like a limited edition Pikachu, you know, like console of that, and like just all this random stuff. And I went down like this deep dive one day, and I'm like, one, why am I going down a deep dive on an educational Sega console that no one really knows about? And two, I'm just like, how in the world did, did like Japan, like how did they get all this crazy stuff? And no, the coolest stuff. Yeah. And you compare like box art, different covers, different games, prices. It can be $300 here. The same game over there is 20 bucks. You know, just, oh, you just see so all many this, shmups like that. Yeah. All this stuff like that. And it's like the wildest, wildest thing. I uh yeah I like I like shooters a lot and like like the PS1 shooters mm-hmm. you know if I want Ray Storm in uh, on uh PS1 and I want the ESRB copy we're talking 100 to 150 200 bucks or whatever and you know I get the Japanese copy for like 20 bucks it's like mm-hmm. oh man and and it's a shmup so I'm like I really don't care if it has English like it really doesn't matter so I just buy that and I just buy the Japanese ones so I've been I've been I've been really into that and then um yeah not every game needs english to be enjoyed too like so that's another thing that's really fun is um now that we have that little world of emulation i can kind of like test a game see if it's playable Mm -hmm. and then if i'm halfway enjoying it i order it and i I have the physical coming in from japan and I, i really like it and then also i found that um you know like if you just have a nice emulator and your pc has a disk drive you can play japanese games on your computer straight off the disk from that i'm like oh that's kind of neat so nice. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm i love collecting uh imports it's like a whole new horizon and th- i could tell like what i like about your collection too is that you know it's it's um it's not just games it's like the whole hobby like it's yeah. like you're in, you like you're into like the artwork and you buy the the, the, the standees and you get to, you know what i loved in your videos you have all of those monster ps2 controllers those things are so rad I mean, you have yeah. all of them i've never seen anyone who had the whole set i've seen people yeah the freak series or two or whatever yeah you had like all like that sort of stuff i like that's like i love that stuff like those little interesting subsets or mm-hmm. those little weird things that came out like i that's my like most i think funnest more interesting things like peripherals and like little neat stuff like that like was that uh was that Mario Kart thing the thing you show with you showed like some Nintendo chair where you sit in the chair and you like lean around in it or something like that? Was that the Mario Kart that you're talking about? No, I, I forgot to share that in the game room tour. Um yeah. but you you can see the Mario Kart thing in um I do like Game Ramer Travels the World and I go mm-hmm. to different states. It's my South Carolina pickup, and then I also did a recap of that and I talked about it in that recap video of everything that I found in different states because I'm trying to find like one notable item in each state. Like so all the states and then trying to go to like different countries at some point and Mm -hmm. find like one notable item. So I know I forgot it in the game room tour, but that NES controller that you're talking about, it's the Mm -hmm. Nintendo hot seat. And it's yeah, what the heck is that? (laughs) <laughs> that has like a tilt mechanism in the little joystick. So mm-hmm. a kid, not really me, because probably weigh a little too much for that chair. <laughs> I would not fit in that thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh you can hold the joystick and like when you tilt in the chair, it'll actually like kind of steer like in the game. So it's like the wildest thing and something like crazy that like people would be like, what? 
So I had um, family over and I have like a lot of younger, like my cousins and stuff. They all have young kids mm -hmm. and they all came over and they're just dragging that seat around. They're jumping on it, sitting on it. And I'm like, <gasps> my heart, but like, they're fine mm -hmm. because they're kids and they can fit in the chair. But like, if I did that, a grown adult jumping on that, I would shatter that thing into like a million pieces, but like, it didn't even do any damage. Like it's so durable for kids. But like part of me was like, maybe next time I should put this up because this is a very rare item that like, you know, mm -hmm. kids should not be, but they're just sitting on it and they're, they're playing with the control. They're having a blast with it. And I'm like, well, I guess it is meant to be enjoyed. <laughs> so so, yeah. so you're, a, you're a much nicer person than me. I'm like, <laughs> no one touches my stuff. Like, <laughs> if the kids come over and they want to see my games, I'm like, all right, yeah, there they are. Now get out. Don't. Can we play it? No. I'll let you play this emulated 3DS. Here you go. You can have that. You can play my Steam Deck. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I just don't <laughs> let them touch my actual original stuff. It's like... Uh, Sorry I had to go for so long. My dog's having some hmm? troubles going to the toilet. So I might have no. to keep going out. Yeah. She keeps eating grass and getting constipated. Oh, no. Been there. Yeah. <laughs> can't stop them they're just like speaking of being constipated is it time for the quiz <laughs> let's do it guys let's get the figsies quizzes underway Alrighty, this should be a lot of fun. Um, not all of the questions work downloading them, so we can't do them all, but a lot of the questions we've got are a lot of fun. And before we get into it, you guys in chat didn't solve last week's question, so we have the same question from last week. Um, you guys have to name the video game from the four photos. We will be keeping this question until you guys can nail it, so good luck. All right, guys, how this is going to work. Um, I think I know how it's going to work, but we'll find out. So you guys are going to not be taking turns. You're going to be entering at the same time. First person to get the answer gets the point. I'm First couple of questions, I'm going to be showing a image, and every five seconds the image will reveal more pixels of the game cover. Uh, after a minute, it'll eventually reveal the cover. First person to correctly name the game gets the point. Uh, so here is the first one. Good luck. I'll just pull the answer up first so I know the game. All right. If you do get it incorrect, you will be locked out. Oh, I was about to ask that. I was like, what if I oh. just start saying everything? <laughs> That's my mom. No, I'm just kidding. Um... Locked out. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like staring at it. I'm like, is it supposed to be getting easier? Because now I'm getting further away. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> It's a sailboat, not a scooter or whatever. Sorry, what is that? From all rats. Sorry. Uh, oh, okay. It's starting to look like something. Yeah. I know it's for, I know it's system. It's Vector Man. Ah. I will pay that. It is Vector Man 2. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> I see it now. <laughs> I saw the Genesis. And um yeah. And all the green. Mm-hmm. All right, you guys ready for the next one? <laughs> Let's go. I see blue. Yeah, it's like I know what it what it could be. I just don't know the specific game. <laughs> I think it's a PS4 game. Bloodborne. Joe is locked out. 
<laughs> I should not have guessed. Dang. <laughs> Sorry, this guy look cocky. Ah, oh, now I know what it is. Dang it. I want to say it's like Resident Evil, but I'm probably wrong. Not Resident nope. Evil. I had plenty of time on that one. That was. I'll just let oh, it reveal sure. itself. I thought it was No Way Out, so I was wrong. Oh dang! I should have known that. I should have waited to the end. If, if yeah, you had all the time in the world. I like <laughs> screwed myself. So. Because it was uncharted, yeah, lost legacy. All right, we will move on to the next one. I was just looking at that game cover the other day too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I feel like everyone should know this one. Yeah. Oh, orange and green and black. Oh, of course. <laughs> it's a cool idea. I'm drawing a blank. Oh, it's a Game Boy game. Dang. Um, our type our type is correct let's no. go all right i see it <laughs> all right these I next like type three it? There you did. I i'm going to games. play theme songs or music from the game and you guys have to guess what game it's from. now oh, no. i'm screwed I'm bad at all of this. So no, I'll yeah. just take the titles. One of them I need the specific number it is. Because there's lots of them. Okay. Randy, I'm I'm really bad at this, so. Met Metroid? Not Metroid. That sounds familiar. I'm just drawing a blank. Definitely familiar. Oh. It's Final Fantasy something. Six? Is it six? Yeah. Let's go. Mm. All right, next one. Moody Tunes, girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Donkey Kong? No. Not Looney Tunes. I think I know it. It's Crash. It's Crash Bandicoot. Dang. I thought the ooga da booga I would have given it away. I should have got it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, last it's like it was playing in my head, but I just couldn't, like, visualize it. Oh, you're close. I mean, you are both onto it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I have no idea whatever this is. I have no freaking clue. Oh, wait a minute. Yes. That is familiar. Sounds familiar. Man, I need to brush up on my skills here. <laughs> oh, I know. If this was guitars, it would freaking crush. I don't know. I have no idea. NES? I'm going to say it's an NES game, but I, I don't know. Pretty sure it was an NES game. Double Dragon? No, I don't know. It's not it. I'm much better at multiple choice. 
Yeah. That one was. I'll give you a hint. It was a tough NES game. It probably isn't a hint because they're all tough. Though. Oh, there's a lot yeah. of tough ones. I can Ninja think Gaiden of like three. <laughs> all right. It's so we NES game for... that was <laughs> tough. It was Aladdin. a game. I was Aladdin. Oh. I didn't play it on the NES. I played it on the Genesis. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the other two questions didn't come over properly, so that concludes our quiz for today. Guys. We uh, well done, Joe, for great. taking today's Fixies quiz. Round of an applause. We did so well. Yay. We are and no best. one has yet got the chat question, so we'll once again bring it up. Our first person to correctly name the title will get the point. That one is weird, man. Like I am, it's making my head hurt because I'm like, why is the Doom guy upside down? Like I don't understand that part. I don't know. Just need I to feel like I understand that part, part, but I don't understand anything else. Yeah. Oh, we lost Figsy again. He's always taking the dog out again. Yeah. So just so you know, um, I tell Figsy all the time that to me the quiz is like <laughs> ritual humiliation. Every week I get exposed for not knowing anything. So don't feel bad if you don't know the yeah. quiz. <laughs> There have but been episodes where I've gotten zero answers for the whole thing quite often. I'm just like, Pfft. yeah, but the crazy thing is like you mm -hmm. say quiz and like my mind goes blank. But if we're having like a normal conversation and you probably like yeah. showed me some of those, like, and I listened to some of those, mm -hmm. I probably would have got them like a normal conversation. You say quiz and I'm like, <gasps> quiz. the pressure shut your brain yeah. off. It literally, yeah. it, it does it all the time. And and what cries me crazy is when it's something like I like you said I know I know it and ninety percent of the time in any other situation I'd be like oh Castlevania two but like if for some reason when I'm on the quiz I'm like I've never played a game before yeah it's like <laughs> what's a game oh no I thought this was about turtles like <laughs> I don't yeah. know no that's good stuff though <laughs> um so hey but we powered through it. Yeah, we did. Yeah, there's that's no prize that, anyway. That's all that matters. And at least you got some because someone had to get at least something. <laughs> Let's go. Exactly. There had literally been a quiz where neither I nor the guest have gotten an answer correct. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and I was like, I feel like we should just skip that. That was 20 minutes of just me going, um, I don't know. Like ripping your hair out. <laughs> like, oh, no. I fail as a gamer. <laughs> So, speaking of games, what have you been playing lately? Um, it's always like a tough question because <laughs> I feel like I should be playing mm. a lot more. Um, I currently have my PS5 on the floor. I'm trying mm. to get it hooked up to like my streaming area. So, mm. what I've been doing is uh, it's real easy to connect. I've streamed a few games on my PS4. So, I played that like Lego Drive game. Um, just it was in the backlog. This is fun, and it's it's like um, it's like a driving kind of like racing. It's not really a hundred percent racing because it's like an open world, and you have to like drive around and compete like little quick races and different things. So I streamed that a little bit, and then I played um, one of the wrestling games recently. It's uh, let me just look back real quick. <laughs> I did play Turtles too. Um, so mm -hmm. I was playing. I, I did do that. You like I the did, Shredder's Revenge or one of the old ones? There's such a, a huge backlog that I have. Um, oh, oh it was Retro Mania Wrestling. So I did play okay. that. Um, someone gave me a code for that. And then the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it was on the PS4. So it was uh, Mutants in Manhattan. So I did oh, okay, get okay. through that and I did beat that game as well so those are kind of what i was playing there are tons that i have though um mm -hmm. on the backlog obviously and then for like retro games it's just it's whatever is on whenever i put on a kiosk or something or if mm -hmm. i'm playing a game real quick i really should play games a lot more but we all know how that goes <laughs> well I, i've tried to explain to people too that like collecting and gaming aren't they're related but they're not necessarily like the same thing 
And like, I know there's lots of people who probably play games more than me, mm -hmm. but they don't collect. So, uh, and then there's people who collect a lot and don't play a lot of games. And then there's people who collect a lot and they just play like one or two games a lot, which is what Figsy's like guilty of that. And I'm guilty of that too. It's like, I'll have 20 new games to play and I'll be like, yeah, but I'm going to go play Stardew Valley for the 10th time, or I'm going to go play Need for Speed again. Cause I just really like that game. Or I, it's like these games that I constantly go back to. Um, but like one of the things I've always like, like I've, I, I'm over like that, like pressure feeling of like, I have to play this or I have to play that, or I have mm -hmm. to I do whatever I want. It's cool. If I don't, if I buy games and never play them, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Like that's, I intended to. And if I don't, I can always sell them, which is a reason why I like physical games mm -hmm. and digital games. I, you know, if you buy a digital game and you never play it and you've literally just threw your money away and there's yep. nothing you can do about it, but at least with the physical copy, if like it's 20 years from now and I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'm not going to play this game after all. <laughs> I can at least <laughs> throw it and sell it and get some money back. So that's nice. No, that's always the plan is to one day be able to play this stuff. Um, that's mm -hmm. why I'm really big on physical as well. But mm -hmm. recently, like, I guess I just had, like, a lot going on. I just went to PAX East, oh, and cool. that's in uh, right Boston, in the... Massachusetts. Yeah, right in my backyard. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually in Maryland. So mm -hmm. I had to drive through, like, seven states to get there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I just picked up a bunch of games there that I'm actually looking forward to playing. So one, they had um, Castle Crashers. And oh, that's, that's the be... exclusive that everybody's raved, going crazy for, right? Yep, and it nice. was like real expensive, but I got the PAX um, bundle set that they had. It came with like a plush, a lanyard, mm -hmm. but I'm looking forward to playing that because it's been years since I played it on the um, Xbox 360 arcade, like their live mm -hmm. arcade. So I'm really excited to see how it plays on like the Switch. And the last Switch games that I played... Um, I ended up going on Nintendo Switch Online, and I was mm -hmm. playing, like, N64 because I had to test something. So mm -hmm. I just kind of, like, dove back in there, and I'm just playing as many games as I can. Blast Core and yeah. you know, racing game. I'm just, you know, going to town. But most of the time, I like playing really, like, beat-em-ups, fighting games, sometimes shoot-em-ups, and, like, racing games. I'm not yeah. really big on too many games that require so much time just because I don't have as much time that I want to dedicate into it because I'm making content or I'm, you know, it's convention season is approaching. So I'm trying to, you know, mm -hmm. go around the different conventions, meet up with people, make more content, buy more things. And it just, you know, I'm always guilty at, at that. Cause you know, we want to play more of our games. That's always the intent to play mm -hmm. them but sometimes i lack a little bit so i'm trying to get better at it that's cool and so like i said like uh, you know we all reach a point i think where it's actually impossible to play all our games it's not possible like so even if you were like i'm gonna do it let's yep. do it today's the day i'm putting them all on there we go you're not gonna actually do that unless you'd completely neglect every other aspect of your life yeah, like, like sleep, it's not even. Yeah, sleep work family yeah. food you know just you know life in general and maybe so, in 30 years i'd beat every game that i own so i mean it's just yeah and for what for what so you can be like i did it you know it's not so it, it you just got to realize that like at some point it's okay to accept that you just like to collect stuff mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily like an obligation but I've seen lots of people in the comments. They're like, "Why would you keep sealed games? Why would if you, you play them all? Blah blah yeah. blah. Why would you bother?" I'm just like, "You guys don't understand. It's not. I didn't get the sealed game to play it. I didn't even never never intended to. Like, I buy two copies of games if I want. Sometimes I keep one sealed, and I have one that I'm going to play, and then I play one, and then I sell the copy I opened, and I keep the sealed one on the shelf, and I played the game, and I have it sealed, and that's you know." There are things that I do that don't necessarily make sense to a lot of people, but that's because they're not into the hobby the same way that I am. They're just into gaming and that's fine. You, you can be, but you guys have, people have to realize it's not the same thing. It's just not. And speaking of buying two copies. So I went to PAX East mm -hmm. and limited run games was there and they had a special, um, oh, convention. Boy, oh, edition. Game ever made. 
<laughs> and they had the original actress there, and she signed the sealed copy of oh, the convention yeah. exclusive variant. Uh, I was going to say that cover. I've never seen that cover. Yeah, because it's the convention exclusive variant, and I had her sign it, and it's sealed. That's cool. Well, I bought a copy that is um, it's it has two different versions because it has reversible cover art, and mm. I had her sign this one, but I opened it, and I mm. also had her sign the other side of the manual as well so it's also signed and then oh, she even so signs nice. the manual so i opened this one because if i were to ever want to play this game <laughs> or at least like see the extra content that's included on it mm -hmm. um you know i have one that's open and one that's sealed and then i had mm -hmm. her sign all of it because it was free signatures and she was there so you know people don't understand that sometimes but sometimes you just want to you know, get one to open and one mm -hmm. to stay sealed just for collection purposes. If it's a exclusive variant or something of that nature, you know. <laughs> so I do we something. I understand that I think... a lot of people don't. And it's I know they're like, why would you buy two games of something you're probably never gonna play? And I have it on the 3DO, so it's when like you own thousands of games, and you're never gonna run out of things to play. And <laughs> another thing people don't, probably don't realize is, like, I'm probably not gonna enjoy every game I own. I might mm -hmm. enjoy half of them or 70% or even 90%, but there's going to be tens of hundreds of games that I'll put mm -hmm. in and I'll be like, oh, actually, I don't like this. Like, yep. it might have good reviews, but I don't like it, you know? Yep. And I don't ever take reviews where, like, I always, like, if, if, if I don't know, if with movies, TV, games, if a review, if it gets, like, panned by critics, I am, like, more likely to try it out. So yeah, I, I don't God, trust them. They said bad I, things about the Mario movie and stuff. I loved correct. it. I laughed. I cried. I had a blast. These are people that they don't know anything. how to have fun. They're not. Yeah. They they don't understand the point of fun unless it's like some sort of amazing ground artistic thing that I'm like, it doesn't need to be. Like, I don't, you know, some things mm -hmm. can just be stupid and silly and goofy. Like, my favorite movie of all time is Evil Dead 2. Okay. And it's the silliest movie ever. Yes. It is ridiculous. It doesn't take itself seriously. It's totally goofy. It's a horror movie that's funnier than it is scary. It's yep. it's it's a comedy. You know what I mean? And and that's it's my favorite thing in the world because it's just fun. There's yeah. it's not trying to do anything else other than make me laugh. That's it. <laughs> and so I love it. And like that's what I like. I like things that are just just fun. They're just designed to be entertaining. And critics, they all huff their own farts. And they take their things too seriously mm -hmm. and they want everything to be some sort of life changing thing that's going to change the world or do mm -hmm. this or blah, 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 or, you know, send this signal message, whatever they want. I, I don't know. And if it doesn't, they don't like it. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, so I don't know. I like lots of things that people think are terrible. I don't care. I like Vin Diesel movies. I don't give a shit what anyone says. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, what? I don't care if they're terrible. I like them. So, like, like I said, like, I never trust uh reviews or whatever you should always play things for yourself because like yeah. you said there could be games that people say are terrible that you think are super fun yes and that's all that matters it's whatever you like and whatever you enjoy and they made the game for a reason there's someone out there even mm -hmm. people who talk bad about et there's people who love et if you play the game right it's not that bad that's so probably it's someone's like... first game and it got him into gaming yeah and that's their memories of how'd you get into gaming well, actually, I played E.T. on the Atari and I loved it. You know, there'd be yeah. someone out there. Maybe just one. <laughs> There's another phenomenon in modern gaming, too, where a game may come out and like the first week or two might be like a rocky launch. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're having some server problems or it's a little laggy or it's a little buggy or something. <clears throat> and and sky. Sure, let's just say, whatever. I'm not talking big games, indie games, pick whatever game you want. But it has a rocky launch. So what happens is everybody makes videos and reviews it at launch because that's mm -hmm. what happens. And everybody puts out negative videos of the game. Yes. And so then what happens is that people go, oh, crap, and they fix the game. Yep. But then how many people go back and say, hey, guys, good news. The game's fixed. Everything's great now. No oh, one. Yeah. All that stays on the Internet is the videos where people are crapping on it. So yep. then what happens is if you see the game and you're like, hmm, I want to look up this game and it's got all this bad feedback, you may skip the game. But some people like if you're like, no, you know what? This game looks good. I'm going to try it. And then you play it. 
and you don't have any bugs and you don't have any of these mm -hmm. problems and everything's fine and you're having a pleasant time and like i guarantee you there were people who bought cyberpunk 2077 and played it on lunch and it was fine for them they didn't have any problems and they were like, what's everyone going to I played it on PS5. Some people. And it crashed like some people. <laughs> Maybe not that game. I don't know. Maybe there's one yeah. or two. And I'm just saying, there's probably people out yeah. there that are like... I tried to give that game a chance, man. It didn't work out. So that happens too. <laughs> Sometimes critics say a game sucks and you're like, nah. And then you play it and you're like, nah, they were right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, nah, I got the new system. I'm going to make it work. I'm running on an SSD. Yeah, after like the 60th crash and like... 40 hours on my i just gotta stop um but yeah. that's a perfect example of a game that flipped mm -hmm. around and people did make those videos that said hey cyberpunk 3.0 is good guys it's actually a good game now <laughs> try it mm -hmm. i still haven't gone back and replayed it but it's on my list to give it a go with. oh they could have been champs if they had just see they released the ps5 version and they had the dlc and i was like oh yeah but they didn't put the dlc on the damn disc so mm. That's literally the reason I did not go back and try it because I was like, oh, and I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I think I'm a grumpy old man when it comes to that stuff. Like I'm very like, <laughs> like I'm just reaching to the point where I'm like, nah, if it's, if it's not on the disc, if it's not the way I'm just like, eh, I'll wait 10 years gonna... for the, why, why, why? I would honestly rather just own it digitally. If it's, if, if it's not on the disc anyway, who cares? You know what I mean? I'm just making myself feel better by buying a physical copy at that point. <laughs> um, Even when it crashed. <laughs> all right, maybe that one was a bad example. So part of the charm of the game, guys. But in saying that, I played PUBG on the Xbox when it first came out. And for the first, like, 12 months, you would crash four times during a game. Oh, jeez. But the game was that fun that I still played for a whole year straight. And like everyone in the community was like it was part of the game. You would you would see people just running because their console crashed. And you'd be like, oh, it's an AFK guy. <laughs> I wonder if he's gonna make it. Poor guy. <laughs> and that was it became like part of the game. And you'd win a game, and you'd be like, Yeah, I crashed twice and I still won. <laughs> oh my god. That's kind of impressive. The um, problem was it was a PC game, and everyone's like, "Please port it to Xbox." And like, it's not ready, but we, they they called it a beta on Xbox to get around the whole like, broken it's broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then a year yeah, later, one point oh came out. And... Uh, Lulu asked, and like, how it was half states... price too. So, you know, at least up front, you knew what you were getting. You know. Uh, Lulu wants to know how many states have you been to to find games? I know you do a lot of conventions, you said. Do you do like the. Yes. So I've been to more states, obviously, but I'm really trying to hone in on like one special item. So I don't want it to be like, you know, I'm going to go to Rhode Island and go into Walmart and buy a game. I don't want it to be like that. So I have a video coming out shortly. I just, um, you know, came back and. I made a pit stop on the way to PAX East in Boston, Massachusetts, and I actually picked up a standee. I won't say which one it is, but I picked up one in Rhode Island, so that counts. Um, so last year, I think I did nine or ten states, I think it was, and I picked up like notable items in each of those states. And then this year, so because convention season kind of just started, I've already hit two states. And I have a few other states potentially lined up by the time that I go to other conventions. So I'm just trying to hit like as many as I possibly can um, each year. But it it's something that, you know, due to time, money, all that stuff, mm. it's not something I can just do on a weekend. <laughs> so if I'm traveling, like I'm going to a video game convention in Alabama this year, and I've never been to Alabama. So the goal is to buy something in Alabama that's noteworthy, whether it's a kiosk, a standee, a store display, um, some weird promo item or something. But in the past year, I actually went to quite a few states and I found like gaming cabinets and kiosks and standees. And uh, in this room at the top, I have a vintage Super Mario Brothers fan 
from like the eighties with like the I, legit fan blade. The ceiling fan. I ha yeah. uh, my friend had that as a ch as a child. I know exactly what fan you're. Uh, talking I know the one talking about. So cool. Yeah, yeah, I went to um, I went to Virginia and I actually got it for fifty dollars. Was it from Guy and Patrick? No, I'm just kidding. So it's <laughs> it's all the way up that. there. It's a little hard to see, but you could see like kind of says like Nintendo, and then yeah. the fan blades each have like a different character. So you know, I I did that, and that counted as like my Virginia because it was fifty dollars, something mm -hmm. noteworthy. It's something that you just can't find everywhere, and like that Mario Kart that I got in South Carolina, and a Tekken standee for the PS2 era that I got in Delaware. In Maryland, I ended up getting a Wii kiosk. And then at that guy's house, he also had a KB Toys cabinet. A KB oh, Toys cool. Nintendo 64 store display cabinet. And oh. he was like, I'm moving. I can drop it off at your house. And all I want is $500 for it. And those go for thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. And you know, he just brought it to my house. And it's just like, you know, sometimes I get lucky with this stuff. Sometimes I'm not necessarily looking for something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes other things just stem from one little thing. So, you know, it's just trying to find as much as I can, just trying to find different things that mean something to me or that will look right in the game room and have a history and you know, that's that's what I love because we can all collect games, but you can really tell about a person by how they display their items and mm. how they carefully construct their game rooms because you can see what means a lot to them and what they just really appreciate. You know, it's just, it's always cool. Like, I love everyone's game room, whether it's big, small, or in between. It's just, you could see the passion behind it, what that person loves what they love sharing when they talk about these items, the way that they light up and the memories and you can really connect with people. So that's, that's something that I absolutely love. Yeah. You're spot on there. And it, it not just game rooms, like you can go to someone's house and they collect CDs and mm -hmm. movies and VHS. And you just, you almost get like a snapshot of their personality, seeing mm -hmm. part of their collection. It could be handbags or shoes or it doesn't matter what it is. You know, someone's yeah. like displaying it proudly and it looks really cool and they're like proudly talking about each thing. It's like, you know, that's part of that person and you can visually see that. It's really cool. <laughs> I just wanted yeah. to add when you're um buying things from different states. So um you almost like do you take into consideration um the further you're traveling, say you for example, say you went to like um the West Coast, you wouldn't be picking up a small item, it would like be an extravagant <laughs> no she went to california for superman 64 yep <laughs> <laughs> it means a lot it's the best game ever now like so for instance um usually i try to drive to these conventions because i know me and i know i want like the big displays but i actually flew out to um a game convention out there in arizona and i actually found this golden mario statue and I brought him on the plane, like I put him in my backpack and we went to the aquarium and I had him out looking at the fish, like at the <laughs> aquarium. And it was just like this funny little thing that I was doing. And he shot and, a bunch of fireballs at him. You stupid fish. Yeah, oh, it was like, <laughs> it was like the craziest thing. Cause it's one of those Famicom shop, um, little golden Mario statues from back in the day. And I got it at the convention and in my head, I was like, I can't buy anything big. It has to be small. And when I saw that little guy, I was like, perfect. perfect. He will fit and carry on. Perfect. This, this is going to be great. So it doesn't always have to be something large, even though I, I like the big displays and stuff. But even if it's like, I also went to um, Georgia last year, Atlanta, mm -hmm. Georgia to uh, Southern fried gaming expo. And I bought a little tiny Mario bank. And it was from the 80s, and it had, like, the different color overalls. It was, like, different than how he looks today. And I thought that was cool because I have the little Sonic the Hedgehog bank as well from the 90s. And it was cool, like, comparing both of them. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Uh, is that from Game 1 Expo? Yes. So, uh, 
I know. I'm Man, gonna... everybody went to Game On Expo this year. I should have gone. It wasn't this year. I went last year. It... Oh, okay. Great. I'm sure it was great this year too. But mm. um, yeah, that's that's what they had there. So I just I like to go to different states. Like I went to Ohio. I'm going back again this year. Going back to South Carolina. But I need something in North Carolina. So there's a couple things I've been eyeing up. So I'm hoping you know that. Everything just works out and I can get all these certain items that I've been, you know, watching for some time. And because I'm trying to stick true to it. I don't want to just order something on eBay and have it shipped from the state. I want to physically travel to that state, whether cool. it be a convention, a game store. That way, like it also helps me like, you know, you want to travel a little bit and stuff. So it just it just would be cool at the very end if I can be like I went to every state. Mm -hmm. Hawaii, Alaska, everywhere included, and I found these gaming items, and then I can eventually like turn it into like this big compilation. It That's makes cool. for a good story too. It's awesome. Yeah, and then, and then it, if you finish it, there's part two. Every country in the world. Yeah, that that <laughs> oh my is the plan. <laughs> Although I went, I went to um a couple more so recent, and one of them I could not find one gaming item to save my life. There was nothing. I even tried to find like a bootleg. Damn you, South Dakota! You got I, nothing. I what what country were you in? Um, I went to Dominican Republic. Oh. So I was out there, and I could not find one gaming item to save my life. There were no game stores. There was nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> you, you'd be surprised what you see. I was, I play. I was. I mentioned I played a lot of GeoGuessr, and it's the Google Maps game. Mm -hmm. And I was in um a location in Kenya, in like the, a town in the middle of nowhere, and there was probably 30 shops. And one of the shops had PlayStation and painted like controllers and a PlayStation symbol painted on yeah, the Yeah, I was PlayStation for shop that. in like this little town in Kenya in the middle wow. of nowhere. Like that is so cool. Like you know, there's gamers in this town, and there's probably no licensed games in there. It's probably like one system that's hacked and has the games on it. But mm -hmm. that's what they do, and that's what they play. Yeah, and... even even if it was like a bootleg item or something, like something hand painted or handcraft, I'd still probably pick it up just for like the story of it. But I couldn't find anything, so we'll we'll work on. I'm that gonna try to find you guys a photo from when I was in. <laughs> thailand and i bought a bootleg copy of grand theft auto it's really cool nice i should be able to find it it won't take too long and one thing i love seeing too um in like the toy collecting community there's tons of bootlegs and especially with like the teenage mutant ninja turtles and like oh wow <laughs> sandwiches no, no okay <laughs> legit right <laughs> oh yeah the printing on the left looks real good <laughs> But you, you know what that contained? That contained a copy of Grand Theft Auto Five, because that's how they get the games in the country. Because you know you can't legally sell a licensed pro uh, product. If you make your own cover and pretend it's something else, you can. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's like those odd things that are definitely like conversation starters or like the weird items, like. See that stuff's like cool because it's it's a part of like history. It's like how we are, where we are. It's you know you get to see all that like craziness. That's that's all the stuff that I love. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. I love it on an international scale as well. Like Brazil, for example, like you know they had bootleg PS2 games up until like late 2012, and you know that was crazy. Some of the stuff that you see in some countries other countries like um we had a collector on here tell us about all the different bootleg games they used to get in iran because um there was sanctions on sony but they still used to get like playstations in and Jeez. sell them under something else and they still got burnt discs in and were able to play them and so, yeah it's really cool i mean yeah, it just shows well. that gamers will always find a way to play games <laughs> yes i'm pretty sure they're like I can't remember what country it was either i think it was russia there was like bootleg nes's that weren't real nes's and like there's like weird versions of all the nes games that are called something else and like mm -hmm. it's like this whole cool thing that you get into collecting but i don't know it must be like really impossible to find that stuff and who knows if it's legit 
Yeah, I'm sure. Read nowadays... something this week that Russia's coming out with their own console to rival Sony and Xbox. To oh, geez. Then so they, what they they're going to have their own games too. So what happened is they put a bunch of sanctions on Russia, and like a bunch of businesses like didn't do business anymore, and so they just turned them into Russian businesses. Like so, like they all the McDonald's are. I'm, I'm sure, yeah, that's something else now, and they like they just yeah, so they're just going to do their own versions of those things. And I, I guess like, like have games that aren't available anywhere else, and it's only available. Well, what's funny too is that, like, I guess, like, they have like an Apple store. It's not called an Apple store, but like, you still, it's still full of Apple products because even though the Apple can't sell their products, they're just going over to the countries next to Russia, buying them and bringing them to Russia and selling them anyway. Mm -hmm. It's a bit stupid. <sighs> Whatever. I don't want to get into geopolitics or anything, but <laughs> it, it literally is like pointless what they're doing. It's like, it's, it's like, uh, yeah, but if we uh, flip it into how it can, um, influence gaming life. Like we could see games mm. that licenses are closed for in the Western world, but it's just produced in that country because they're not going to sell them anyway because they're in Russia and they're just producing yeah. these games. Like Simpsons Arcade, let's use that for example. Suddenly, <laughs> like there's physical copies for like modern systems available mm. for that. Like that would be cool, you know. Well, that's what China makes a million rip off console things full of pirated games. They sell them like crazy and then. Like, I'm always blown away. Like, how is this happening? Like, Nintendo, especially, they're so, you know, strict about stuff. It's like, how yes. are they allowing this? But that's because there's no, they can't do anything. Because that's like, we want to sue China. China's like, get out of here. <laughs> no. And then, then they're like, damn it. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. I mean, it could honestly, you could get some interesting stuff that comes out of there from that. Oh, man, that would piss people off, man. Are you imagine they just like, they just start like, selling nintendos again <laughs> oh, and just putting it out i just like just ripping them off oh man that drive them crazy i mean i can't I'm, imagine yeah i think nintendo deserves it i'm sorry i'm pissed at them like no offense like like they the switch is like the most successful console they've had in a long time they're making a lot of money and they're still giving people a hard time and going after emulators and acting like jerks it's not like they're mm -hmm. on the ropes or right or anything like they're doing fine, and I don't care if they lost out on a million sales of freaking Zelda, whatever, dude. You're gonna sell a million more anyway. Like, mm -hmm. I, it's just, gosh, how much money do you guys need? Like, I just, I don't understand it. Like, it's such, and it, and it doesn't help. Like, I'm telling you, it just makes people like your company less when you do stuff like that. It doesn't help. Nintendo are a public company now, right? That's correct. I don't know. Because if they are, then it's like, you know, they run by the shareholders who want profit. So that's, it makes sense yeah. that that's how it works. No, it doesn't because you, you make, you, you're going to make less money. You're not going to make more money by doing that. You're just going to piss people off. People who pirate things are, they, they, they're going to put effort into stealing more than they're going to get put effort into paying. Sorry. That's what they yeah, do. Yeah, but then they'll just be like, we'll just sue them all and you'll get your money in the lawsuits in the long run. And Maybe. More Tell these companies well. That's why we don't get games anymore. Like you know, because oh, you can guarantee we, we money with started remake. on this whole I physical, digital <laughs> this this world. You get a blank case. You download the thing. Stuff people are still saying that they'll always buy digital, and you it's don't fun. even own this stuff. And they're taking away certain things, and it all starts with restricting access on one thing, and. I don't know. People just don't understand us collectors at all and why we do this stuff. I don't think see a um, South Park episode one day and they'll be like, they took our games. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, 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 they probably will. <laughs> they don't understand ownership. They just don't understand property. They don't understand the concept of it. And like mm -hmm. being in an all digital landscape, I've tried to tell you, like, they can just shut you off, guys, anytime. If, if it's all like at, their leisure on their service based on their terms when they want to provide you with the service they can just take it away whenever they want and like i just don't like that relationship like i don't like it like now i give you money you give me game the game is mine go away i can play it i can keep it i can sell it i can do th it's mine mm -hmm. but in the digital world i could play a game and then they could say man we're just turning off the servers you can't you can't or we're getting ddos today no games for you today well, well, sorry, someone's DDoSing our servers, so just no one can play today. No one can play their games. Oh, well, 
Yeah, and people. What's your favorite game? Is an online that. game. Like your favorite game of all time is an online game. They shut the show up. You can yep. never play it again. Like, and there's so many people out there right now who their favorite game is an online game. And guess what? There's gonna be a point where that server's shut down. And the developer either makes a new game, makes a sequel, or moves on to mm-hmm. something completely different. And unfortunately, that will happen. Like it's already happened to so many games. Overwatch One is gone. No one mm-hmm. will ever play it again. Counter Strike One is gone. No one's ever going to play that again. Yeah, World of Warcraft. That was that was the first experience for me. Like, I was like, if you loved original Vanilla WoW, mm-hmm. sorry, sucks to be you. Burning Crusade. I hope you like this. And if you didn't like that, I hope you like this. I hope you like that. And then what happens is over time, <clears throat> you realize you don't like it. You like the old game better. And guess what? That game is gone. You cannot play it anymore. It's not available. It doesn't exist because they've decided that you shouldn't be, have access to it anymore. You didn't decide that. Someone else decided that. And I don't like. I just don't like that concept. Yeah. I don't Sometimes like that. it can be fine if, if for Fortnite for certain games. I mean, I guess. But like, I don't know. Like, I just to me, it's just like I don't like that idea. Like and yeah, I hate games just... that are online only. I just can't stand it. Like if there's a bad storm and the trees get knocked down, I can't play games. Stupid. Dumb. And not just for games either, just all media in general. Like I just saw another article, I think like last night, I was <laughs> endlessly scrolling, and it said that like the new reboot of Rugrats, whether it's good or not, they just took it off of one whole streaming service. Like it's gone. They don't have any access to it. And it's like mm-hmm. if that's something that you wanted, like it's gone. There's no physical for certain things. And it's like that could potentially be lost at some point. No one will Mm -hmm. ever have access to that. And that could happen very much with a lot of games. And people don't seem to understand that. And they're like, well, I'm going to buy physical and I'm going to also buy digital when I can. And, you know, this and that. And part of me is like, you're paying the same amount for digital when you're not physically getting something whether you have to download updates and all that stuff i i get that but at the mm-hmm. same time it's like at least for like the cover and the artwork and just anything to have it to have access to it or to preserve anything and mm-hmm. you know i just i don't understand some people i get not everyone has space for everything we don't even have space for everything but you know. well, I got an everybody not wanting to do this. This isn't yeah. normal either for most people. I get it, having a freaking room full of games or whatever. But not normal. I think it is. But like, I just—it's one of those things where it's—it's it's unfortunately, it's people just aren't going to appreciate it for what it is until it's gone, until it's too late. They just mm-hmm. won't understand. Same thing that's going to happen with movies and DVDs. Is one day you're going to be sitting around and you'll be like, "Hey, I want to watch," you know. Friggin', uh, you know, whatever. Small Wonder. Remember that show? Love that show. Want to watch Small mm-hmm. Wonder. And you know what? Small Wonder is not going to be available on any streaming services. And you're going to go, well, what the hell? And, and the DVD is $200. And, DVD and then the, correct. The DVD players are never going to be. People will complain then and be mm-hmm. like, oh, man, why did, you know, and then it'll be a big thing. And that, yeah. that actually happened once to me. So every Halloween, I like to watch a lot of the horror movies. So I go through like the Friday the 13th and Halloween's and, you know, I, I like to do all that. So I made it through, I think like Friday the 13th. I don't know. It was like four of them or something. And then I wanted to watch the fifth one. It was not available in any streaming apps. You had to like purchase it. Mm-hmm. And it was like so much money compared to every other, like everything else was free and everything after that movie was free. And mm-hmm. I got so frustrated and I was like, you know what? I'm not, I refuse. I'm going to buy it and I'll watch it one day. Like I'll go through the whole thing after I buy them. Because Five it, it sucks like, anyway. Just so you know, that one sucks. <laughs> I know. But I still, it was like. Four is where it's at, baby. I love four. It was four. the principle. Like I watched the four. I was on a kick. I wanted to stream them all. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I didn't want to pay 20 some dollars to rent it. It just, it didn't make sense. I wanted to find it, you know, in person, but. Mm-hmm. You know, it's you don't have access to everything when you want it or when you need it. <laughs> um, so they announced uh, they have a Blu-ray coming out for Berserk, the TV show from 1997. Mm-hmm. And the thing sold out like in five seconds. It was going for two hundred dollars on eBay, like oh, immediately. Dang. I was like, holy crap. It's like a brand new DVD that just came out. I'm like, this is insane. So it's going to happen 
for everything. It's like it's like you know how games people are like, I can't believe these prices. It's happening for DVDs and Blu-rays. You guys better be prepared for that. So if you, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm 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 like forewarning people like. If there is anything you want to own on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K, you should get it now. Yeah. Because some of them are already outrageous. Like, I wanted to buy the Hellraiser movies on 4K. Mm -hmm. It's like 150 bucks to get the set. It's like, oh, my goodness. And um, I mean, even music, like, the Mm -hmm. way the music scene set up is, let's say you listen to your favorite artists on Spotify and then they get a deal from some random label that says, we want all your music exclusive. And we actually buy it all off you. You don't own it anymore. And yep. the artist takes the deal because it's like $10 million. Suddenly you, you can't listen to that anymore unless like they release it on some other site. Like, that's and then how you hear, works. you hear a lot who sell it too. And then they have to like re-record it and they're regretting it. So, like, there's a lot of them that actually regret it because they don't have access to it. And it's, like, their music. And, you know, they have to re-record certain things. And it's just, it's so much. Yeah, we're in a wild world right now of um, people adjusting to how to, like, make digital content and how to Mm -hmm. make it their own and how to make money off it without, like, losing out and not... Feel the video game scene is going to suffer. Oh yeah, like the music scene suffered, and we're going to see less small developers because it's going to be harder and harder. Uh, especially with what went down with um, the program they used to make games, is it Unity. Unity charging mm-hmm. like a lot more than they ever were, and it's like literally just going to kill ninety percent mm-hmm. of the projects on there. And the top guys are going to make everything. And those are the ones that control like the entire market. And we're going to lose out on like single people ideas, making video games that took them five years. And we get these amazing games like Stardew Valley, for example, like, that guy today, if someone wants to make that project, it doesn't seem feasible. Like, you know, it would almost be so, impossible. You're better off selling the idea to a bigger company. and going. Mm-hmm. That. So it's pretty sad. So what happened is that regular people can compete with Hollywood now. YouTubers can be as interesting and as popular as a three hundred million dollar movie, and it costs you like uh, you know your camera and some free time. You know what I'm saying? That's it. So like they have to like attack that. So that that happened a few years ago where if you like YouTubers were all like being attacked by mainstream media as the devil and, and all sorts of stuff because the mainstream media was getting crushed by these people. And the AAA developers, they probably don't like the indie scene very much right now. Let me tell you like, you know what I mean? Like they probably hate that they spend 250 million dollars on a game and it flops and then some guy can work on a game in his basement and sell it and make millions and like to stardew like i'm god can you imagine i can't imagine how much money that guy's made off that game it's just, mm-hmm. it's just there's a band touring the world right now playing an orchestra of stuff yeah. about like i know i just found out they came around here in february we missed it oh geez. i was i'm actually sad about that i would have gone to see that but yeah it's like so you know i, I feel like uh, i wouldn't be surprised if they, they ask unity to do that you know what i'm saying they're like please stop this because it's I don't know. I would much rather play an indie game than a triple A game too. Like indie games, mm-hmm. you can tell they're made with love and passion, passion and artwork and craft and, and, and um, they're designed. They rarely are like, they're not micro transactions. They're yep. not, they don't, they, they, they're like, Nope. I want, what I want to do is I actually want to tell this really personal story about something that happened to me in my life and my journey. And I want to, reg- you know, I want this to be like a, an emotional experience and I want it to have an impact on the player and I want it to have killer gameplay. And even, even though my graphics aren't that great, I'm going to have it have just the best platforming and the, or the best this. And I don't know, it's cheaper. It's better. Uh, I enjoy it more. It makes me feel better when I'm done the game. And like, also like it's like, I swear, like, I'm sick of depressing shit. I don't know about you guys, but I am tired of bleak, depressing stuff. I want uplifting, happy, positive things, stories, movies, games. Like I want stuff that like 
you know, I, I, I'm like horror games and scary crap and, you know, whatever. But like, I'm just, I don't want games that make me feel bad anymore. Like I like games. I want games that like cheer me up, make me happy, make me laugh. Yeah. You That's have fun with for. it. A good time. Yeah. I don't need, I'm sick of a post-apocalyptic, whatever, blah, 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 blah. I'm just like tired of this depressing crap, man. <laughs> you know, sometimes well, I was watching I him at stream the other day. Coins. He, um, he does a thing every Friday where he plays new music from the last week and, he played this song and he didn't realize the song was made by AI. And he's like, oh, that was an AI song. And then he played another song and we're all like, oh, the AI song was better. It's kind of sad. Oh, jeez. Like, what type of world are we really going into? Where, yeah, like, we do. If- we live in a, a crazy world where soon there won't be games anymore. You'll just, there won't be other stores. More stores will be closing down. The won't be game sections. I mean, I don't know. I don't know where everything's going to end up, but I'm all for, you know, all of this like new stuff. But at the same time, I'm a little bit worried as to where this whole gaming industry can potentially go. I can see GameStop being blockbuster in 10 years, you know, and people being nostalgic over missing GameStop and things like that. And it's only a matter of time at this point, right? Like, and Amazon will know, stay alive, but I can't really see anyone else. I mean, limited yeah. run, of course, because they do something completely different. And well, yeah, because that's, like that's what they're focused and, in on. Yeah, that's that's us. Like, we're, we're, that's what we're going to have to buy video games in the future. But your average yeah. mum and dad who you know has a system for their kids and goes and buys video games, it's going to be online. That's where they get their games from. It might be on Amazon on their phones and getting it shipped to the house, but it's Rarely going to be in a brick and mortar store. Yeah. Yeah. So I just feel like, I don't know. I just feel like I'm not leaving gaming behind, but gaming is leaving me behind. It's just mm-hmm. like, it's like saying, we don't want you anymore as a customer. Sorry. Yeah. Mr. F- Mr. Physical, you've had, you've had your day. Thank you. But we're just moving on. We want, we want what the hip kids want these days. And that's just what it is. And that's unfortunate, but. I mean, for me, like I said, there will, there are, I will, I'm, I will, there will always be new games that I find interesting. I'm sure I'll still buy some new games, even if it's all digital. I'm not going to be like, never going to buy any new games ever again. But like, seriously, like, I'll be going back in time, not for, for forward in time. I'll be purchasing more PS4, PS3, PS2, PS4. Yep. I'm, I'm just going to go backwards when Same. it comes to collecting. Uh, there is, you know, an infinite amount of stuff to collect out there at this point really like yeah i haven't i still want to collect for a master system i'd love to have a master Mm -hmm. system collection so i could start that when i'm older and and do that and and uh you know these guys they're just i they're gonna make less money overall like it's the same thing that like you said this music industry what happens when when it went more digital and people stop buying cds the masses you know everyone says well there's vinyl blah 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 sure okay there's still a market for it but and when, once the masses stopped buying it, they made less money. And same thing with the movie industry. Once what like I've heard uh, people in Hollywood talk about this a million times is like smaller budget movies used to make their money on the DVD sales. And mm-hmm. so you could you could make a smaller budget movie. And even if it didn't do well in the theaters, you could still make your money back on the DVD sales. Well, now there are no DVD sales. They don't exist. And so because of that, they don't make those movies because they know they won't make money because it has to make money in the theater. And if it doesn't make money in the theater, it'll lose money. And they know that these smaller, weirder niche movies are harder to sell to people. So they just don't make them anymore. They don't exist. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't like that. And like you said, when smaller developers are going to suffer when we go all digital, that's exactly what I think will happen is like you said, they'll be starved out of the market because there's just, they're, they're making pennies. They're not making anything. Because they, all they can get is a streaming deal with Xbox. That's it. And they're getting a yeah, penny and, per and play. And be like, take it or leave it. You know, this is what you get. Exactly. Take it or leave it. This is the only marketplace. This is the only place for you to sell your game here and maybe a couple other online stores. That's about it. And it'll uh, be cases of we own your property. Like yep. it won't be a royalty thing or uh, 50% of sales. It'll be a, you sell it to us now and we get everything and yeah, yeah, and if it happens to be a smash hit, oh well, thanks. Your name's and by on. that point, it doesn't even feel like the passion project. It just feels like something that's forced. And what I noticed when I went to the uh, PAX East, 
I noticed in so many places they were like, oh, this is online only. Like, we don't have physical option. Like, there were so many places that said, we would love to see this come to physical, but we just don't have it in the budget, or we just don't have this or that. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's just it's very, like, disheartening to see where this could potentially end up, you know, because it's just it's just so crazy to me. I just, I don't know. I'm hoping for the best, but at the same time, I just don't see things going, you know, back to the way that they were. You'd have to feel for those people at conventions too, because like 90% of the people walking around probably want physical copies of the game. Yep. As soon as they hear it's digital, it's going to walk it away regardless of like how good the game is. I'm I'm guilty of it. Like, if the and then, game is digital only, I'm like, oh, do I even want to play it and waste my time? Yeah, it's like a complete turn off at that point. And then I like heard the craziest thing. Isn't it like Pokemon or something? They're talking about digital only trading cards. Like you rip the pack open online and there's like other companies that are doing that. I can and see I'm that just, happening though. Like, and I can see young people getting into it. Yeah, just paying and, all this money for digital stuff that you don't own or physically have in your hand, and it's just like. And then Nintendo, I, being Nintendo, would have a marketplace where you probably can't sell those things, and like once yeah, like they're I on just, there, that's it. You know, you can't redeem them for real life money unless you sell your Nintendo account. Yeah, like that's that's the craziest and, thing that I recently heard, and I'm just like. Man, why didn't I think of this? <laughs> like, if this is working, why didn't I think of that? Like, that's crazy. Did you guys want to get into some pickups? Or a little bit out of time. But... I, yeah, I got a couple if you want to go them real quick. Um, so, I'm actually really goddamn excited about this thing. I don't know. Maybe you're not yet to be an old timer, but I got the Atari nice. 400 Mini. Nice. Um, so, like, my very, very first gaming system ever was an Atari, like, XC mm-hmm. computer, home computer. And, like, my first gaming memories ever were playing on the Atari. Um, and um, when I heard this thing was coming out, I had to get this because this one specifically, it's not for, like, the regular 2600. This is for 400 games, mm-hmm. 800 games, the 5200, and the XE and XL games, like the home computer games. Mm-hmm. And... um When I was a little kid, I'll never forget this. Like one day my dad took me to this guy's house. His name was Sonny. And he was like, you have to wait out in the car. And I'm like, all right. And he ran in this guy's house and he came out with this giant box. And basically (laughs) this guy, Sonny, donated um, like all his Atari stuff to us. And he had like hundreds of games on floppy disks, like the big old floppy disks. And you know, a lot of them were burnt games back then, but it was just it was just insane. And I had so much fun playing that dude, playing Ultima and like Karateka and uh all these old ass games. Um, and anyway, this thing plays all those games. So I am this is like memory lane. I can't even wait. I my older brother, I told him about it, he got one too. I was like, yo, dude, you gotta get we gotta play some food fight, son. He's like, Oh yeah. <laughs> so I got I got the Atari Mini, and then I got the uh, the extra controller to go with it too. So, nice. uh, and uh, I am super excited about it. I have I've been downloading the games for like two months, so I have all the ROMs ready to go. I um just waiting for a flash drive to show up to put them on because for some reason I'm stupid and I forgot to order a flash drive. So uh, that's nice. that's my biggest pickup, and I'm so excited for it. And <laughs> um, yeah, Atari rules. I know a lot of people uh, don't go back that far, but it it's good stuff. All right, okay. and then these other games. I ordered these from Limited Run like two years ago. That's I've literally, not literally two years ago. It was like April of right. 2020. And you've got them already? Wow. I, I know. I know. And so <laughs> I finally. So I, it's so funny because I ordered this game. And it's been so long. I don't remember what it is, but it's called Dreamscaper. I don't even know what it is. I don't remember. Oh. It's been so long. I can't even remember. Uh, it looks neat. It looks like a top-down action game something. <laughs> no idea. I don't know. But there it is. I finally have it. I hope it's good. Um, hey, you got any then... pickups from Woot? This is... this. Is... Oh, man. I went through no, and Woot. found a sound effect for the Woot pickups. No, I got no Woot pickups this week. 
<laughs> okay, well, I got this last week from Woot. There we go. <laughs> anyway, this this is what it this is actually why this took so damn long. Is I ordered Esp Galuda 2, but I ordered the um Switch Ooh. Mini Arcade to go nice. with it. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm addicted to shmups. They're like my favorite thing in the world. Here's a, this is a this is one of them, and this is actually right. a really a really good one. It's a I think this is a cave one, right? It's a cave shmup. Wow. Yeah, it's a cave one. So that's that's gonna be good stuff. And then um, these little mini arcades are dope. So basically, it's like a little thing you put your switch in it, and then you could put the Joy-Con and play with the Joy-Con. But I would just use a controller and sit there. But anyway, it's like a nice alternative if you want to play in um, Tate mode. But you don't want to hold it, or you don't want to get like a switch right. grip. It's just like a really elaborate, absurd way to play, <laughs> but it's neat. And um, there's three of these that they have. They have the Mushi Mushi Sami Mushi Shushi Shami Hami Sami Shami Mushi Shushi, whatever the fuck that game's called, Mushi. And then Dodon uh, Pachi Resurrection. That one's that one's right there. So now I have all three of these. Nice. That's yeah, all. If I get a bigger game. <laughs> I want to actually take them all out and set them up because I have like five switches, so I want to put them all in there, have them all. Nice be awesome. there. Be dope. Yeah, it's gonna look dope when I'm done. You got that lime green That's a nice color. Sorry, what was that? What was that? You got that lime green that's on the front of that one. Um, well, that's funny that you mentioned that. Is I'm actually buying. Uh, I don't have this, but I'm gonna buy that Joy-Con, and I have mm -hmm. Joy-Cons to match the other ones. Like I have a purple one, yeah. and I have a red one specifically for to match the thing. So I don't have this one yet, but I will have nice. that. I'm gonna buy that. I kind of want the pink Joy-Cons too. They look kind of nice. You see the pink yeah. ones? Like, you know, they're pretty good. They're pretty good looking. And then they have um, they came out with a really cool pastel one that was like only available in like some bundle or something. Like that. I think you have to get Mario Party with it or some shit like that. It wasn't there some special one like that. I don't know. <laughs> you know what Joy Cons I really want is I want the um uh the Dragon Quest ones from Japan. Have you seen those? Yeah, those are really cool. Yeah, dude. I they're expensive. Japan gets some of the best, coolest things that we do not oh, get. Cool. So they these are one of those things where like they're only available in Japan. Like they won't ship it to the United States. If you put it in your cart and play Asia, they're like not available in your country. That type of stupid crap. One of mm -hmm. those things, but they're on eBay for like a hundred bucks, which is really expensive for joy cons. So I was yeah. like, ah, I don't really want it. But then I saw on the joy cons, if you move them left or right, if you push it to the left, it's got the slime from dragon quest inside wow. it under the button so the little slime goes hey lord he like pokes out and i was like oh my God. that makes it worth I it I yep. to buy it. that's so sick <laughs> that's <laughs> worth the extra 50 bucks yeah just you're paying that. just for that yeah and somebody knew that they put it on twitter they put it on twitter and they were like look my dragon quest slime saying peeking and saying hello and i'm like oh what i just like immediately was like i gotta have it just pushed me over the edge so <laughs> So, like I said, I go through a phase about buying things. I'm like, I'm not gonna buy it. It's too expensive. And then I like can slowly convince myself to buy it. It gets cooler. <laughs> <laughs> you like talk yourself into it at that point. Correct. Yeah. yeah. That's how it is. But my talking myself into it is typically like seconds. So I'm like, no, I probably shouldn't do that. All right, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> like, I shouldn't like, buy this. Blink, and you're walking out to the car. Oops, with the bag. I accidentally bought it. Whoops. Well, sometimes, so they uh on Woot this week. Come on, man. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, that's your moment. <laughs> I said, yeah. I wasn't man. ready to. I wasn't ready to. It didn't happen. I was like, there's the perfect moment. They had um, <laughs> Xbox screens and everything. <laughs> they had refurbished Xbox Series X's for sale for 150 bucks. And wow. I was like, oh, that's a really good deal, but I don't really need that. And then, like, two hours later, I'm like, 150 bucks. God damn. That's a, I got to go buy it. And it was like sold out already. <laughs> yeah. That happens. So, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's the yeah. It was sold out. Woo -woo. Sometimes that the hesitation, that little the little hesitation screws me. That's all I'm saying. When you get a deal that good, you'll have resellers who are like sharing it to reseller groups and like yeah. figure out all the stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it got linked on Twitter and that was gone. Like they sold out quick. 
But, you know, refurbished is kind of a question mark. You don't know what you're going to get. So. Mm-hmm. You got anything you for Brandon? Um, I know I already shared some earlier, but when I went to uh, PAX East, you know, mm-hmm. I got these two copies and then the autograph. But since everything, you know, is downstairs, I ended up bringing these up just so I can uh, talk about it. So I recently found these. I haven't done like a full pickups video. So these are those Wilton cake pans from back in the day. <laughs> and um, I'm going to do like a full video on them because I found quite a few. But here's a turtle one. And this is from 1989. Now, I'll show. I'll share a funny story with this one. If you put a cake in that pan, that is not coming out looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, so <laughs> yeah, let me tell you. So it's like the paper that comes with it with the whole guide of how to do it. But I found this one and I got these super cheap. They were five dollars. And like on eBay with the paper, they go for a lot more. And this mm. one's also from 1989. Well, one of the reasons why I was just a little tiny bit late was I decided that at my parents I was going to um make one of these. And this, this is how it turned out. Now, it looks exactly like it. Let me tell you. I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> it looks, looks dope. Exactly like it, okay? <laughs> so it's just like, and I did that right before I got on this podcast, too. That's why I was, like, a little bit behind, you know, because uh, <laughs> really trying to make this turn out right, and it just looks slightly off. <laughs> so I don't know how people can really make these look exact they must have some talent and skill because he looks um, cross-eyed even in the example <laughs> <laughs> but like i just i really don't know i like yours this is my Mario. <laughs> like, <laughs> like i just don't know so he did the trim on the mustache maybe you know i mean he let it grow out a little bit he just yeah, to yeah, dial but... it back a little but it's all right that was a little Chocolate rough. Frosting maybe is like the best the frosting. I just, I just, I couldn't get the colors hundred percent right. They they tell you a guide, but it doesn't work. You mix the two colors and you get green, not brown. I mean, I don't know, but <laughs> it was a fun experience. Let me tell you. And for all the kids that got these awesome cakes back in the day, they are the true lucky ones because trying to do this nowadays just. <laughs> It does not happen. So, <laughs> yeah, there's those awesome. are kind of, kind of like some recent fun little pickups other than like new games and uh, Super Nintendo games, which I, I do a whole series and stuff on my channel and mm-hmm. found some GameCube ones. And, you know, this this trip was a lot of fun. So I definitely I got tons of free stuff at the convention and just some free games, free promo items, free merch, apparel, wild, crazy stuff. And that's awesome. I love those cake tins. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah. Whether they turn out or not. it's. I'm sure the cake tastes good, though. Like, I haven't had it yet. I literally just made it. Um, probably shouldn't eat it, but I'm sure it tastes hey, delicious. No matter someone how. Handed me, someone was that thoughtful enough to make me a Mario cake. I would shed one single tear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. <laughs> I got some more PS1 games to show you guys. Nice. Um, so we're up to the letter T. And we're moving into the Tomb Raider series. So it's Never heard of it. OG Tomb Raider. Is that any good? And... Double case. Nice. It's weird how they wrote the la- the name on us on the spine. I know. Of a, like, usually they Tomb do it twice. Raider. You know? yeah, yeah. 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 It's kind of better, though. Than... And it also says Raider Tomb for the record. <laughs> Raider Tomb. Here's Raider Tomb, guys. All right, here's Raider Tomb 2. Mm-hmm. I haven't got them all. I'm missing a couple because there's so many Tomb Raider games on PS1. There's like seven. Yep. Um, I would really like them to come up with the remake on a physical. They mm-hmm. did the little HD things. They look great. So Nice. Three. Graphics are getting a little bit better. Now, it went up to five, and then we all... I don't have four, four and five, but I do have... Lost Revelations or whatever. The Lost Revelations. Yeah, yep. yeah. yeah. And then there's some double packs as well. I've got one of the two double packs, which you'll see a little bit later on. Nice. Uh, 
Oh, I thought I'd done all my James Bond games. We have another one. 007, Tomorrow Never Dies. I had a lot of fun with this as a kid because I earned it as a kid and you play all the games you own. And I love James Bond. Yep. It's not the best James Bond game. Like, the missions are pretty tacky, but, like, nostalgic. It's fun for me. Um, uh, what was the movie after Tomorrow Never Dies? The World Is Not Enough. I think that one was really fun. Mm. It had, like, its own casino side missions as well. And it felt really cool. But, yeah, this game yeah, still Yeah, I loved all those games. And then um, Nightfire. Man, just playing yeah, with some of yeah. the bots and stuff, and then my brother, and just going through either having the bots on your team or against you. I mean, those were just the fun days of playing all those games, all the gadgets, and yeah. Yeah, the gadgets are so much fun. <laughs> some with like helicopter things that you could just, you could just fly them right at people just to like get that point. Like, you don't even know how to like steer it, but you're like, if I could just fly it into the person. And get that, you know, point. I'll do it. And then, like, the little tanks and all that. Yeah, 007 Racing was the first game in the series we showed off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, moving on to another series that's one of my favorites. Has got the PS4 remastered treatment, and it is, like, one of the best PS4 games. Actually, I'll show you two of them, because two of them did. Because we're talking about Tony yes. Hawk's Pro Skater. Tony Hawk's the Pro Skater. Too. Best soundtracks ever. Oh, yeah. The only thing downside of the ps4 remake is it didn't get the og soundtrack i know but it still has a really good soundtrack so i'm upset cool. too that they're not doing three and four and then underground one and two that was like the yeah, perfect I, I feel like, um, opportunity i feel like we might get an announcement at some point that they will do them because it's just free money like you know, oh, three is my favorite so i was yeah i would really like three and four at least you can know the OG number three? Yes. So that was the one that like introduced like a oh. lot of the other mechanics. Yes. The best mechanic. Like where you get the most amount. That is how I started getting like million points. Mm -hmm. Like just so many because you could just double tap and, you know, do all mm -hmm. this. And I don't you know. Turn the whole level into one big loop. If yep. you knew what you were doing. Yeah, like, like between every trick you'd be manually to keep the multiply going and grinding yeah. on everything and oh so much fun and yeah, my little brother he was he used to like turn the whole timer into one trick yep and i'd watch him play it and he would like fall at the end and be like no, oh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just so funny to watch but if you land it it'd be like yeah you million, like, trillion, yeah. million quadrillion points i was just like oh my god i beat the game <laughs> yeah like it, forget it, it, all it, the tasks he brought it. He took it to a level where I'm like, "Well, I'm never beating that score. I don't want to play anymore." Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I mean? right? That's the type of game it becomes. All right, next up, we've got our generic PlayStation One driving game. Uh, I'd never played this one. It's called Total Driving. Hmm. And again, it has the five dollar price tag that I paid for it. Nice. That you want to pay for PS One black label games? So many generic driving games on the PS One. And someone loved that game out there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure someone did. Um, <laughs> just here we have a basketball game. I think this one's cool just because of the artwork and how it's done. It makes it look like it's a ball. Uh, Total NBA 97. Now, I don't think anyone's favorite game is this next one. Because as a kid, I bought this brand new thinking this will be fun. And it was not fun. And it was like the one game that playing as a kid that I'm like, oh, not every game is fun. I've just learned that, and that is truck racing. <laughs> Look and dad into buying this for 20 bucks because he had a truck, so we were able to talk him into it. And um, It's <laughs> truck racing. The trucks are really slow, hard to overtake. It's not fun. The graphics are yeah. bad. The trucks yeah, everyone else is in a sports car. That's why it sucks. You're just in a truck. <laughs> but, yeah, like – um. I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe I was thinking it was going to be like a destruction derby game or what. But yeah, this was a terrible game. There was a sequel on that, PS2. Um, <laughs> Truck Driver Simulator on PS4 is supposed to be great. Yeah, those games are. Those games look great. Too, yeah. Completely yeah. different style of game, really. <laughs> Very cool. Play musical it's someone's games. favorite game, though. <laughs> well, it wasn't like seven year old me's favorite game. No. 
I'm like, turn that off. I'm going back to Spyro the Dragon and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One. But so that, but like those games, there all there are. You right though. There are people out there that is their favorite game because there's people out there that like they don't play any games at all, but golf games. They love those, or they don't yep. play any games at all. But those fishing games that nobody seems to like. There's people out there yeah. that love those fishing games. You know what I mean? Yep. That's like their favorite thing. It's like, I remember that my, only play Call of Duty. That only play Fortnite. My dad was Call obsessed with the little one of them little handheld poker games. He would play that thing like nonstop. He wore the buttons out on that. He's like, I got <laughs> 75 billion trillion dollars of this thing. <laughs> people out there playing Candy Crush. Like, you know, exactly. Still games. So and so, so that yeah, there's like there's tons of franchises out there that I'm just like, who who's buying these? They come out with one every freaking year, and they it's like mm-hmm. the farming simulator games. It's like farming simulator 37. And I'm like, how many people are buying farming simulator <laughs> this often that they have to have enough. every year's farming sim? Like, you know, they're what I mean? clearly like, enough because they're making them exactly. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing, there is a market out there because they keep making them, so somebody out there must be religiously buying these things. So it is what it is. I think, I mean, honestly, it's most of the people who hang out in the PlayStation collectors group who buy all them damn simulators. <laughs> and half of them just make videos like, why did I buy this? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I have 55 airport simulation games. I, I have no idea. So. <laughs> well, on that note, we might call that a night, guys. Brandy, thanks so much for coming on and chatting to us and um, showing that us your awesome. collection. And that was awesome. Thanks for having me. I definitely appreciate it. <laughs> so working if you guys haven't already YouTube. go and check out um your youtube channel i've linked your instagram below too so definitely thank you yeah guys it's good content <laughs> definitely go check out the videos it's awesome go sub if you haven't too yeah and follow along up from see the um the nes <laughs> the snes collection be completed in the next year or two that'll be really exciting i'm hoping what? like this year <laughs> do you have a game do you huh? have like the heavy hitters? Do you have like the heavies already, or? Um, I have a good chunk of them. There are quite a few of like a hundred plus more, but I have Hagane. I have Earthbound Complete in the big box with the guidebook. Oh, nice. Like I have those in are, the... those are the two scariest ones, I think. Yeah, and I got a lot of like the big box ones already. Um, Arrow Fighters is that SNES? I don't have that one yet, but that one is probably around like a thousand or something Ooh. or twelve hundred. I know that was John pretty... Hancock's like last one he needed for years. And... Yeah, if I could get well, it for like eight hundred or something, I'd probably buy it. I'm sh- I'm sure I could find it for that. You could trade. Some stuff. I've seen I'm it sure for some something in there you can let go. go yeah. <laughs> You're worse than me. You don't know nothing. Go even if I, you want to buy more stuff. No, I don't want to trade anything. I get attached to things, even two things. So I have um two Dreamcast kiosks, two of them, and people are like, "Oh, you could just trade one for like a Saturn or trade one for this," and I'm like, "But I like two. It has a friend. <laughs> like, it's just like, you know, sometimes, and I'm like, if I get a third, maybe. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> I can attach to things. It's it's a problem. <laughs> All right. So if you ever show anything off, I won't ask to buy it. Pretty I much, yeah. Answer. No. I hate when people I, do I, that. When you post something on Instagram, yeah. and like, people try and buy it off you. It's like, yeah, I have an eBay has- store with a thousand items for sale. Like. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, ev- everyone's like, you should open up a store. Like, you have enough for a store. And I'm like, yeah, welcome oh. to my store. Nothing's for sale. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't well- touch. <laughs> $10 entry fee. Hands off. <laughs> for real. Yeah. Cool, guys. <laughs> well, thanks, everyone, for watching. Awesome. We'll see you guys in the next show. Peace. Night, everybody. You found the coolest place to be The PlayStation coolest thing to do Tell us what you think with me Welcome to the show Gather round the boys and girls Collectors from around the world The world of show the people what they need to know Welcome to the show Gonna talk to Gary When we got the best Gonna put their knowledge to the test Gonna laugh at me Gonna listen to me Gonna show you Yeah! Oh.